yeah, 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 live from Cafe Willoughby with your host Tyler Brown and Sam I Am Willoughby, Sir Richard Fiswell and the baddest BMXers and industry heavy hitters on the planet. Let's get it on! Seven. Monday night, nice. 6 p.m. Yeah, we are here. Yeah. Sorry, June 5th, 2007. Yeah, number three. We've got a good, good, good lineup this weekend. Uh, we are yeah, going to go. We're going to preview Salt Lake City. We've got Nick Long in Salt Lake We've got Jukio from Japan in studio. We've got Ed Dean here. We're going to call Bubba Harris. We've got Alan Flo. We've got Lee. a hell of a show. That's what we got. We're going to call Sue and Andre. Fitzwell's going to call me. We got uh, uh, all sorts of Q and A line up, so don't forget, you guys can still call in eight one eight two zero two and twelve ninety. You can leave a voicemail, and we will be pulling lines up as we get going. We can actually, uh, yeah, actually get that yeah, 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 on the screen. Yeah, 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 pretty bad, the bad. We'll get better in the future. But uh, there's a quick preview of the line. We'll bring that up later once we do up the lines. So, how are we going so far? So far, guys. We, 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 we're, getting, uh, we're getting some, getting some bad, bad, bad feet already. Already, I don't even, even have any audio on, on yet. Yeah. All right, let's right, go on with this. Oh, let's go. Tell some, tell some things. So we got a big show number three. Right. We're stoked to be back. Be back. Oh, sound it's is shot. Is shot. That's interesting. I don't know how the sound is shot. We're not getting the same right at right. all. I'm going to uh, 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 preview this preview weekend week. coming up in Salt Lake City. We're going to touch a little bit on the Euro uh, round. We're uh, going to Italy on the weekend. Uh, and uh, we've got some videos lined up. So once again, it's keeping us feedback on the sound. sound. Just kind of like Cylon. We got some people yeah, rolling in. I swear we have it the exact exact as we did it last last. I don't know, I don't know what the difference is. I got nothing, got nothing on here. On here. It's the exact it's the same as it was before. So, 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 let us know how it is right now, right guys. Now. We made some change adjustments. See if it's any better. Tell us how it is. So, um. audio <laughs> through. Start again. Yeah. So. We're just going to keep running it. Running it. Turn off the speakers locally. You have yeah. mics. I know we do not have two mics. Two. Yeah, we're going to... Oh, yeah, yeah! Sir Richard Fiswell and the baddest BMXers and industry heavy hitters on the planet. Let's get it on! All right, we are back. For those of you that caught the June 7th show, it is June 5th and uh, we are ready to roll here. 6 07 and uh, we're going to get the show going. So let us know how the audio is now. Uh, like we said, we're going to start off, we're going to preview Salt Lake City and um, go over some videos there. Fitzwell's calling in, Anthony Dean, Nick Long, Jukio's in studio. Uh, we've got Boba Harris coming up, one of the best ever, and Sylvan Andre. So once again, don't, fit, don't, don't be afraid to call in 800-207-1290, leave a voicemail, and we will open up those phone lines later on. So uh, yeah, let's get rolling into it. It's fixed. We knew oh it was fixed. my gosh, uh, how embarrassing. I swear we did the same thing as last week. I'm just going to throw the number up on screen so you guys have that 1 800 number to call in later. So write that number down, save it, remember it. We'll get some better graphics later. We're, uh, once we get that big paying sponsor gig, then we'll, uh, we'll be set for those, uh, those visuals. But for right now, there it is. Sorry about the audio, guys. That's, uh, I don't know, little just technical difficulties. Each week, something new pops up. We're keeping things interesting. But hey, that's all part of the show. That's what happens when you're doing a, two BMX guys that are trying to run a YouTube show, huh? Yeah, show's yeah. janky. Show's janky. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. So Sam, what have you been up to, man, this week? Since last show, man. Since last show, someone ran into my fence. What a mess. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's been my week, pretty much. I've been doing some sick 
Just finished up the fly photo shoot. Yeah. Getting rad out there. I'm not familiar with that brand. Checking out the new gear. Fly racing. Fly? Yeah, it's fly. It's pretty fly. fly? Okay. Pretty fly for a white guy. Don't know it. I was doing some flying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so other than that, just another usual week, man. Just been living out at the BMX track, all that fun stuff. I was trying to talk him into making me a coffee, but we ran out of time. So I've got water in a cup. You've got water. I've got water. And we are rolling. So uh, let's jump right in. I mean, the weekend. Back on deck, we're racing in Salt Lake City. Uh, I'm already seeing the hype on Instagram. A bunch of hashtag, hashtag race ready. Last boom. week, and now you're feeling better and ready to go. Yeah. Back. Nick, you weekend? No, sorry. He's back. back. Here. He's back. Not back. Coming up here pretty quick. It's like in a couple days. <laughs> well, I'm going. You're going to go? I'm going. All right. All yeah. right. That'll be fun. I'm, I'm going to take the weekend off. I'm getting ready for Worlds, but um, I'll be there. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I don't know if you're joking or not. Are you really going? <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is going to be your big uh, big debut back at the national scene, huh? My debut, yeah. Excited? I'm, I'm pumped up. Yeah, ready to go? It's been a while. You put new yeah. cleats on the shoes already? Yeah, yeah. New cleats. Uh, water bottle set. Seat pole's a little longer. You want a longer seat pole this year? Yeah, long what, what cranks do you have on this time? <laughs> Doesn't matter, they'll change before the race starts. Fair enough, fair enough. Salt Lake's always a good one, it's always a good race. Uh, I was talking to some of the guys, it sounds like the track is a little bit smaller this year, so it should be fun for the double A's, you know, make sure they can overshoot a couple more jumps than they did in years past. Oh, they changed it? Yeah, it sounds okay. like they changed it. I was talking to Connor, he was out there, saying the jumps are a little bit small, but uh, I think one thing that always plays in a factor is the altitude up there. Yeah, it's always and it's always hot as well. It's middle, you know, getting into summer now here in in the U.S. So it's going to be hot altitude. Um, it's but it's always a good race. That was always one of my favorite races, and um, you know, it's always a it's a bit bigger hill, fast eight, um, and uh, it, the turns are really good. They're probably some of the best. Turns yeah, in, they are. They the are. World. That know. was actually one of the best races I've ever watched in, in history from you. A couple years back, really, when you were you hit the gate. You were in dead last in the first double-A main, mm -hmm. and I will never forget watching you pass. Don't act like you're, you're not impressed. Guys. There's only eight guys on the track, but you blew by everybody. You just missed winning the first main by about a quarter of a wheel. <laughs> so I'll always okay. say that was one of my favorite races ever to watch. I did get lucky a few times. I don't anyway. think it was luck, but way to be humble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so like, who's, who, who's the predictions? Who do you think's? Poland. Who's Poland? Uh, you know what? For me personally, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably have to throw Joris on there. Yeah. I think he's been looking really good this year. He's got a bunch of wins. I know there's a couple other guys that like like Maris has been hurt. We know Anthony's not going. You know, Nick's back's blown out. Stuff like that. So uh, I think I'm gonna go with, with Joris for the win this one. No vans are going this weekend. That's what I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask if you know if the vans are going. Van, vans are in. Uh... South Carolina. South Carolina. Prepping Shout out world. to the Vans because we know they're probably watching. Shout out so, to the Vans. What's up, Vans? And Nick Kimmon. Oh, yeah, and Nick. Vans and Nick. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see Stromberger's come back. Yeah. Yeah. Stormbags back on the back on the carbon. Yeah, I think that'll be a good so, one. Yeah. I'm He'll big, be bringing some heat for sure. Big Stromy fan. He's uh, he's always been pretty quick at Salt Lake. I've had a few races with him up there. And yep. Him and Stumpy battled there one year. And... Um, so, so he'll be good. Connor's going to race again, I think, this weekend. So Yeah, that's right. in Nashville. Connor is going to go. I was talking to him today. He said he'll be out there. So yep. he'll be there. I think uh, I think it might be a little chase duo between those two battling it out. Um, so that should be a good race. A little dose on Uno. A little, little uh, Maris. Yeah, a little, little two chase, one, one super cross. Okay, see what happens. Okay. What about for the ladies? What do you got for the women? Well, Brooke is uh, Brooke's out. So she got some bad news from the doctor. Uh, we allowed to announce Brooks not yeah, racing yeah. the world. You heard it here first on the show. Exclusive. If you don't check Instagram, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> if you don't check Instagram, Brooks out the world. So uh, sad news for Brooks. She was here the other day, um, getting checked out by the doctors, and uh, so that's disappointing. So she won't be there. Wait, this, isn't this Nick weekend. the doctor? Nick? Yeah, yeah, he got fired. Oh, he got fired with the, the real doctor. Real okay, doctor. just making sure. Uh, so <laughs> Brooks out. Um, I mean, I'm obviously biased with the girls. I think it'll be uh, the old, old beast. We'll give them the old what for up there. Um, Reynolds will be back after okay. a, after a vicious food poisoning. Is in she Nashville. gonna stay away from the salad bar? She yeah, no Ruby Tuesdays. No up Ruby there, so. Tuesdays this yeah. time around. Yeah, she's ready to go. She'll be ready to rock. 
Okay. Um, thus far, anyway. Uh, who else have we got in the ladies? I think, to be honest, I think it's going to be a, an Elise Post show on this one. That's mm-hmm. who I'm calling both days. We're watching videos. We'll show some, some races soon. She has some pretty sick pancakes into turn number one. So I'm going to be looking for not only a win, but some style over the triple going in the first turn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is Caroline racing that? No. Oh. I didn't ask her. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the vans are coming to Salt Lake. The vans are going to be there. Ah, the well, vans are That changes are everything. I'm on Dave. You I'm got, on you, Dave. You double, double pick Dave. I'll double down on Dave. Double down on Dave. Oh, only if he goes gate eight. Dave, mm-hmm. you going to pick gate eight? We want to know. Dave yep. from gate eight. Yeah. The um, vans are going to Salt Lake. Oh, love you, Willoughby. The fan... The, the crowd's pumped today. We got 68 viewers watching right now. That's decent. What's up, all 68 to you so, guys? Uh, all right. So that reminds us, all 68 of you guys, do us a favor. Go copy-paste the link. Put it into your favorite social media, whatever it is. Let's get this show rolling. Mm-hmm. We're trying to break some records today, see if we can get uh, see if we can get up to 200 viewers. What can we do? Yeah, so anyway, um, I guess, I mean, if we jump right ahead, last year in Salt Lake, it was uh, our in-guest studio, Dana. Yeah, he, got in, got he killed it last year. First career win there. Yeah, yeah mate. Yep. Yeah, beauty. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So Dino got Revolution. himself a W there Fun. last year on day one. And then uh, Joris stitched you up on day two, did he? Yeah. Uh, day two, got second. So Joris and Dino. Not, un- not bad, though, for a one-two, huh? Unfortunately, Dino won't be there this weekend. He's uh, resting up, getting ready for the world, so... Getting uh, healing up from his injuries in uh, Nashville, but um, yeah. So let's go ahead and roll we'll watch the some of the videos. Which which one do you want to watch first? Let's start with day one on the blokes. Day one on the fellas. All right. I don't know uh, which one's day one and two here. I'm thinking that this one's gonna be it. Gate uh, is yeah, down right now. Anthony Deep right got a pretty good pop with the elbow. Elbow. The oh, champ a getting a little loose down there. Oh, AD gonna yeah, take him downtown out now. Deep like Cook gonna go one and two right now. Tommy Z's on the move. Going. Let's see if he can put something together. Oh, Robinson finding a way in there, looking for a podium spot now. Bring it back around into that last turn. We're gonna go. It's all Anthony D now front. Corey Cook for the two spot. D Cook one two. Tommy Z on the way back to the line. D Cook Zula Robinson Herman Dade Gustafson Collins. What about that blast from the past day? The old Herman are in there as well. David always, because I think David does good at those ones because he's living up in Colorado, so he's used to the altitude. It doesn't affect him the way it affects some of the other guys. Yeah, he said he takes EPO as well. <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little altitude and EPO, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, we miss Dave. We need Dave back at the races. So I don't know which one girls is which one day one and day two because Elise wins both of them so we're just going to play one of Elise's wins Elite ladies gate is down right now gotta be the beast Elise Post taking it upstairs into turn number one my doc, Gabby, Rimsate, going to line it up, one, two, three, and four, bring them back around, down through that second stretch, it's all post out front, red line bicycles, in and out of the turn, she's going to go, stars and bars on the jersey, signifying she is your national champion as well, bring them back in that last turn, it's all post, my doc, one, two, bring them back home, Gabby, looking for that three spot on the podium today, oh, Gabby, looking for the two, coming back to the line, Gabby, going to hold on to that two, my doc, for your three, that'll round out the podium for the elite women right there. Next moto. So, this one's presented by uh, Dan's Comp. So we got, looks like we got Bear on the inside. Main event time for the ladies uh, right now. Going to be a big pop taking it downtown for the beast. Elise Post yeah. in a turn number one. Turn She's going to go with a little cha-ching. Extra 250 from answer for the whole shot ward. Danny George sitting on that two spot. Gabby bringing it back on the three. Oh, Reynolds coming in hot. Going to take away that three spot now. She's moving up to the podium. Bringing it back down through that fourth straight in and out. Or third straight in and out. The last turn, fourth straight coming back at us. It's all the beast. Elise Post on the top spot. Coming back to the line. Post, George, Reynolds, Gabby, Cortman, my doc. This one you got Joris coming on the inside. A little bit of a, a different main. Gates down with the big There's boys right up. now. Here we go. Elite men headed into turn number one. Don A, the world champ. Your current USA number one pro. Uh, going to lead these guys out of turn number one. Down the second straight. We're going to go. Don A, Dean, one, two right now.
now, bringing him back through. In and out of that second turn, we're gonna go. Still getting it and going. Kenny G looking for a three the spot. Bringing him into that last turn, last straight. AD gonna try to crank it up a little bit on the way back through. It's all Don Day, wire to wire with this one. Bringing it back to the line. Don Day, D. Gosh, you guys are so picky on the audio. What do you want, everything to be perfect every time? Jeez. I mean, last year, Um, Aaron Maris and um, you do have the bands. Yeah. So uh, that that'll be. Brilliant, I believe. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. That those guys are coming over and racing here before the worlds and doing a bit of a camp as well. So good to see. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's gonna be real good to see uh, see how those guys go. But um, more importantly, hopefully we get more than twelve guys. Yeah, that would be nice if some people would show up. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I don't know if he's going. I'm not sure. Yeah. So. Uh, we had a live uh, live coach. in studio asking about about if Bodie's gonna go. That's what was the question in the back. I don't know if he's yeah, gonna go. Yeah, don't know. Probably training. Uh, yeah. Corbin, Coach G, Colin Corbin. Corbin's being pretty good there. Corbin actually won there in 2014, I believe. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. So he. Uh, Got himself a win there then, and and yeah, always been pretty quick. So why do you think why do you think so many guys skip Nashville? Because it sounds like I mean there's only 12 dudes there. It sounds like a lot of people are going to this weekend. Do you think it's just because Nashville's expensive to get to, or it's out of the way, or? I think sponsorship dollars are just booming, and people are just rich right now, and they don't need to race. They don't. <laughs> they don't need to race. Well, fair enough. That kind of goes in with some of our talk that we're going to talk about later with the with the money side of yeah, things. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't get that to be honest. I think. Race, just race, race, race. I mean, even the bands are flying over. The bands, if the bands can fly from Holland, you guys can all fly from California and race. Yeah, I mean, you need to get out there and race. That's the only way. Come on, you, you, you sticking a fork in it? Got a fork in it. What, what are you sticking a fork in? People not racing. People not racing. Amen. And that comes from everything from a local level, from the ten-year-old novice class up to the double A's. You got to race. Yeah. You guys want more. You want more money. You want more payout. You want more this. You want more that. But then nobody's going to show up to the races. Nobody's going to be at the events. Mm -hmm. What do you want, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I think that that's why all, especially like the foreign guys that live over here, it's like that's why you move to America. Yeah. To race. There's like, you know, you don't, you don't, I'll tell you one thing, you don't move to Sun City for the scenery. <laughs> you yeah. Move, yeah. You move to Marietta and Sun City to race. Fair enough. I will agree with that one. So I, I don't get it. But, um, all right. Yeah. So that was kind of a quick review on Salt Lake. Anything else you think you want to talk about? So we took, hit on, who, who's your prediction? Who are you calling for the win? I I think Jarrus will win the day for sure. He's, yeah, he's a confident. Runner I think he's, he's been on the. There. He's got to win pretty much every day. Yeah, at the ABA races this year. But um, I'm still on the Stromy bandwagon. I think he's pretty motivated for the worlds, and this kind of fits right into the worlds preparation. And so I think he'll he'll string a day together. Okay. All right. So you're going uh, Joris and Joris Stromy and the Beast. Bolt Beast is going to double down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Those are good ones. Those are good ones. So that's pretty much our Salt Lake review. We will have uh, next week, next Monday, we're going to have some videos. Who of are you the picking? Event. Oh, I called Joris for, I think Joris, you're right. Both Joris. days? For sure one day. Okay. Mm. Nick. Nick Long. Do you have the Nick's long shot of the week? Nick, come on over here. Jump on screen. Hold on, guys. we got a new segment we're doing tonight. Since Nick's always an in-studio guest, we're Welcome starting to here first. Everybody say hi to Nick. Really we're going to do the Nick Long, long Shot of the Week. All right, well, so what does this entail? you got to pick it's your, you gotta pick your three long to five shot. guy. Who do you, three, who, oh, three to five guy. <laughs> so maybe a podium seat. <laughs> no, who, who do you think could, with either one, like a guy in the back, jump up on the podium, or two, who would be your long shot to win? I the Knicks see, long shot. See what we're doing with that? See what I, we're all, yeah. I want to see Neek come back. I haven't seen him do well in a, in a while. Uh, so I'd like to see him at least get on the podium. Long shot? Long shot would be... Oh, boy. One of the Vans? Yeah, one of the Vans. Who, though? I, I, you we can't call, you can't call Tuan, though, because he's podium there before. So he's what about not a Van Hockham? You have a go of him? Um, you can put Yellow Vagal, come on there. No, no, he Jelly. Has, he's, an Olympic, he's an Olympic medalist. He's, he's not already a long got shot. Yeah. yeah. You got to think like like a long yeah. shot. I can't think of any, any Americans. T Bone? Uh, T Bone could bring a Kenny, heater down Kenny that G? Hill. 
Kenny G's, G's been riding he really podiumed, aggressive. He podiumed uh, last year there. We just watched him get a third there last year. Kenny G's a good schlong shot. Schlong shot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to give... Let's give Jeff... Jeff? Give, yeah. Okay. We're going to put Jeff on a podium. He uh, needs it. Okay. Three to five need, guy. That, uh, three to five that. guy. He's that. getting on the podium. I can see that. Okay. Perfect. That, that's There's it for long shot. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> There's your long shot. That is Nick's week. long shot of the week. There Jeff we go. Jeff Upshaw. So what do we got next coming up on the show, Sam? All right. Well, the next thing, we're going to jump right into our next segment of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed... Oh, man. Okay. Boys, good it's to well. see your voicemail works. I was trying to call in last week to speak with Pelton and was di diverted to some woman who didn't speak a lick of English. Get it together over there for fuck's sakes. Nonetheless, <laughs> great show. Dave Vandenberg, what a personality. His character is dead set as big as his chest. It's sensational. One request before you get started. When are you gonna get the great Bonarenko on? Get her on the show, give her a go. She goes and she knows she's Bonarenko. All right, let's get into it. And off we get here in the US, but there was dead set more live coverage than any race weekend I've been a part of. Just jump onto the old Instagram. A lot of weather reports. We get it. It's fucking hot out there. But guess what? It's summer. It's been hot in summer since Tutankhamen. Nick Long was producing enough watts on his watt bike to power an African village as his five goats watched on anxiously. <laughs> Turner's hair gets redder as the summer gets hotter. He was giving a weather report from the luscious streets of Sun City. A dead set looked like the luscious sands of Saudi Arabia out there where he was doing sprints. Stromberg's headed sea. Chula Vista to size up against America's great amateur hope coach G. Greg Ramiro. Saki Barrow was back at it after his Baghdad-like explosion in Belgium. The men's are in Rock Hill simulating world championships. One van was crashed by a fellow van, but they all reunited for a group barbecue and it's happy days back in the van again. Rusty Nesvik, San Diego's great hope since Nick Long, continues to bulk and is looking fucking massive. The whole women's pro class were all miraculously caught posing by photographers with spectacular sponsorship logo placement at the tracks all around the world. Whilst there was no race here in North America, there was an old-fashioned shindig in Verona, Italy. I disconnected my phone line and fired up my dial-up internet just in time to catch day one main events. They were all there, Pahone, Smolders, Bonarenko, Adaminka and Bal, of course. Day one, Pahone bounced out to the lead, but she was fiercely challenged on her outside by the one who knows, the one who goes, Botarenko. Smolders would have a crack at Botarenko late in the running, but Botarenko would look back and say, I know you're slow, watch me go, I'm Botarenko. <laughs> Bell never produced, but she did push, she pushed hard. Day two, Pahone said, thanks for the cash, see you birds at the next one. Gate dropped on the women's final anyway, Botarenko said, watch me go, but she was beat out by Smolders in lane one. Bow got off to a slow start. She did try to push through, but made a mess of it. Smolders would come home for an easy win. Botarenko was in there for another two, chanting, you are all too slow for Botarenko. Watch me go, watch me flow. Botarenko knows, no one knows but me. Bodarenko. Bow was happily, 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 happily flushing the day on the ball of and move on from Italy. She had an absolute shitter. 
Day one saw the last standing Brit Kyle Evans take home a big win. On day two, the final was invaded by Russian men like it was Uzbekistan. We had Malashenkov, Kliashenkov and Katyshev. But no one saw the slippery Norwegian seven from lane five. He slid through in turn one to take his first win. The Norwegian was very excited. But it's time to go racing back here in the US this weekend. We're going to Mormon country. We will see Stromberg's debut, the Carbon. We may finally see Dordayfields and Stromberg's have an old-fashioned showdown again. One of my favourites, Nick Long. Nick Schlong, he will be back with a new back. And Sam, you can just fuck off after seeing the Watt bike. Nick's a two to four guy this weekend. Two to four for long, I'm calling it. But the real race will be between the pros to get a seat in the shade at the Berm Academy. With no trees in sight for miles in Salt Lake, these pros will be desperate for a shaded seat provided by Jason Cards, as no one has a fucking set up these days. The women's class post. Reynolds and George will come to play. We don't know if Bonarenko will go. Bell said, no thanks. I'm brewing one up for her in a few weeks here where she hopes to produce a solid one. Escobar is laying low until the world's down in South America. My predictions for Salt Lake go like this. Strombergs and Dorday will split wins and Post will nab two in a row. That's pretty much does it for me tonight. I did send a picture in of some national team camps taking place in Baku ahead of next year's Worlds. So take a look at that. But I'm going to end by saying, if you're feeling low, watch Botarenko. Well, all right. Decent insight. Oh, little Fitzy just uh, jumped in, giving us some stuff. So he he did say he sent some some vi photos, right? He did send in a photo, yeah. So let's take a look. He said that he had pictures of uh, training camps taking place in Baku already ahead of the world. So, right, so let's have a look at what he's got. This is the first picture he sent in. Okay. Yep. So oh, all right, all right. So they're already training over there. What will we see? What will we do without Fitzwell and his uh, his interesting? Training photos. This this is the other one he sent in. Is that flat ground sprints they're hitting? <laughs> flat ground sprints. So Baku next year, it's going to be a big welds. They're, uh, <laughs> they're coming in hot. They're coming in hot. Uh, oh, wow. So, Fitzwell, huh? Fitzwell. What, what can you say about that guy? What can you say? Speaking well, of Fitzwell, he did leave a voicemail. Here's that number one more time. If yeah. you guys want to remember to call that in. If you guys want to leave a voicemail, feel free. But um, he got, I don't know where he gets his info from because Nick Long's not racing. So he, he called me out. Fitzwell called me out saying I don't know anything and that Nick was going to be a 2-4 to four guy this weekend. But uh, we'll have to wait to South Park. What's going on with this guy? One thing I did notice, though, is since Fitzwell jumped on, we're now breaking over 100 viewers. So mm. the fans are pumped to see Fitzwell. He does bring the people. He does bring the people. All so, right. Uh, so what do, we, what do we got next now that Fitzwell's done? Well, should, uh, should we do one of our call-in guests first? We'll uh, we'll jump right into our in studio guest. Are we doing the call-in guest? I thought we we're doing Dino. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's do let's do Bubs because okay. I told him that I because he's in Texas right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna call in to the great Bubba Harris. Elise, would you mind giving me a cup to flip over? All right, guys. We're gonna get this going. Let me give Bad Bubba a call. Hold on, before before we, we we call Bubba. Yeah, we got some details here. Let's on let's intro a little bit of Bubba first, okay? Bubba's got a lot going on here. Do you want to run down some of his stats? Yeah, I mean we put up some stats on Bubba. I mean, not that he needs an explanation, but pretty amazing career already. Um, forty eight wins, one hundred seventeen podiums, two hundred mains made, won the worlds in uh, Paris, and did a backflip after winning the world. So he clearly has. The most swagger. That was the last great celebration that we've seen from an elite rider at the Worlds. Um, the guy is an absolute legend. Personally, we're the same age. I've been racing this guy since I was 13 years old. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't start BMX until a little bit later. And just a little behind the scenes story. When I very first started, probably my second week in BMX, I got told by a kid that I raced about this guy named Bubba Harris. And he makes $2 million a year as an amateur and he quit, he quit, doesn't go to school anymore. He bought his mom and dad a house already. So clearly that's what got hooked me in the BMX dream. Found out later none of it was true. He goes to super camp. 
He does. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the guy is just an absolute legend. So let's get this guy on the call or on the phone. We're going to call up Bad Bubba Harris. Personally, definitely. I think we're both excited about this interview. Yeah. Bubs has uh, got some stories for sure. I'm looking forward to chatting to him. Yo, dude. Bubba, what's going on, my man? What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I uh, can't complain. It's hard to complain when you're walking down Rebel Run's first straightaway. Bugs, yeah. how you doing? Good, Sam. How are you, man? Doing good, doing good. Happy to have you on. Yeah, man, for sure. I'm excited. Glad you guys wanted to chat. So just give us a, just so everybody knows, you're down at Rebel Run right now. You just flew in today, right? I am, yeah. I landed this morning. We have 15 kids here this week that are all ready to jam. We had a little bit of rain the last couple days. So we're on kind of a rain delay. We kind of we enjoyed the first straightaway, and we enjoyed the skate park today. So tomorrow is uh, go time. For that sure. place is an absolute blast, man. I spent some time there last year for the flat pedal race that they had. I mean, it's just it's it's a kid's wonderland. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've been here. It's hard to explain unless you have been here. It's it's like a dream. You know, you kind of you you pass through Travis's home, which is amazing by itself and then you kind of go through that you know that little tree tunnel Tyler yeah and then you enter Rebel Run and like as soon as I get here because I look forward to it every year right so as soon as I pass through those trees and I see the trailer and just the trails that are right there and it just pumps me up that's like the start of my summer right there you know yeah man definitely definitely the place is epic so we're gonna get into things um, I'm gonna kick things off with the first question here. I think we're both like I said we're both pretty excited about this the reason I'm most excited is because on the show with me right now, I have two legends in the sport. I mean, Bubba, I grew up racing you. When you first turned pro, you kind of you kind of changed the game as far as professional racing goes. I'm sitting here next to Sam, who was kind of the next generation after right. you, who he kind of changed the yeah. game in his own right. And uh, now oh, that we he got both, it. yeah, he took it to a whole other level for sure. No yeah. question about that. Definitely, definitely. And that's what's cool about having both you guys together on one show is we have two legends of their era. So my first question, this is a double-sided one to both of you. If we could put Bubba Harris in his prime on the gate next to Sam Willoughby in his prime, who's going to win? Bubba, you're up first. Who, who's taking it to the line first? Well, Sam is obviously smoking me to the first turn. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, that's, that's an off statement. But, I, I mean, unless he, he's got to be on point because you know I'm coming at one point. So, I would do my best to find my way around Sam. How about that? Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good good answer. What about you, Sam? Who's winning on the gate? You or Bub? I think Bub high lows me in, in turn three. Yeah? yeah. He, he gives you a little super camp high low <laughs> yeah. last that, turn. I mean, yeah. That's what I would be going for, Sam. That's probably something I would be wanting to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool, man. Well, that, that's always a good question to hear. Um, let's see. We got a bunch of questions from people in the from the fans. Do you want to kick off the first one or you want me to? Yeah, yeah. You, you go first. All right, around. so let's see. Let's see. Bubba, you definitely changed the game in your era like we talked about. I mean, I grew up racing you as an amateur. And what do you think personally has changed the sport? I mean, you have your area where, where you changed things. Uh, what do you think was the biggest, biggest game changer for you in your rookie pro debut? Oh, uh, from I just think that honestly, man, I think me and our era, we kind of grew up riding trails, you know, and just learning our bike skills off the track, not just on the track. Mm -hmm. And I think that really benefited us growing up. Like the like 2004 title that I won against Warwick. The one thing that I had going for me was I was I could get through the pro section, you know, and I could get through it really good. And I think that I would kind of benefited from my. Just bike skills work off the track almost, you know, and kind of bringing that to the track, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you grew and, up traveling the country just essentially living on your bike. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that had something else to do with it, too, you know, with being on the road with my dad in super camp. We were at a different track every weekend. So it's, it was easy to stay comfortable just with your bike, not with the track. Like, you weren't really worried about the jumps or what's on the track, just with your bike. And I just got super comfortable as a young kid, and that just really helped out during my pro career, yeah, you know, I think for sure. As like a lead, lead in from that question, um, I guess like who, who did you train with in your career? And like you, you're a prime example of something we are just talking about, like no question Nashville a couple of weeks ago, there was 12 guys on the gate. And you're someone that, you know, spent your career riding tracks every week, racing every race and uh, was pretty damn successful at it. Um, 
What did like what did a, in your prime? What did a week of training look like for for Bubba Harris? Well, in my prime, I was lucky enough to have one of the best trainers in the BMX industry till still today. Ken Cole is living with me, right? And that was kind of Kenny and I at that point were kind of learning everything together, right? So I had a fully committed coach that I could sprint with, and obviously Kenny's a powerhouse, so he could out sprint me basically, right? So I could sprint with him. He had Ken at that point had my meals dialed in. I would get home from high school. He would have what I was supposed to eat ready for me. We'd go straight to the gym. We would go straight to Valencia to ride with Mike Day. You know, we or we'd go straight to the trails. It was a. Uh, I had a really normal high school life. Like I went to regular high school, right, Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> Never homeschooled. Um, but I just had a really strict curriculum after school. You know, like I got my homework done, and me and Kenny got our work done. Yeah. You know, and I think that was really what benefited me the most because obviously I was blessed with a great young career. You know, like my, I was that's when I was you know, 19 through 21, that's, that's young, right? But I had a very good structure around me at that point in time. And I had a very good coach and my father that would do anything and sisters that had my back, right? So I just think all of that together is what made the process work so well. You know, and I definitely blame, I blame my, my first couple titles on Ken Cools and Beef Slop and Olive Oil. <laughs> and what? There we go. In our meal, like we did. Edge. That's where. And then I. Yada yada yada. But if you want. Against him, you were, you know, winning to the first corner in your prime, and then obviously your track speed was unmatched, pretty much through your whole career, and you're kind of ahead of the game there. Um, what? What setup did you run all your career on your bike? Were you someone that on my bike? I had a, on my top. Like obviously, after I broke myself off in Beijing, I no longer really had a first straightaway because I never let my ankle heal right, and that was all my fault. But in my prime, man, like back in the day when I was winning titles, it was a uh, one seventy five cranks, the forty three sixteen point seven five back tire. Nice. And, uh, I mean, something that I always heard about you, I don't know if you told me or someone told me, but, like, obviously your mental game was one of your biggest strengths. I mean, you just had a swagger about you that was, like, people were just intimidated to look at look at you. And, you know, you were even if you were younger than some of those guys, you, you, you just intimidated them with your presence. And something that I thought was interesting was that, you know, you look at you and you look, you know, you look like a real, you know, tough sort of guy and not someone that you want to mess with. But something that you always did in your career was, you read read books between between races and um, tell us a bit about that. Right. Yeah, man. That's all. I mean, you know how that is during race day. There's so much going on. You know, there's there's so much going on during a race day. So the easiest for, thing for me to do is kind of just cool my brain down, right, and just bring it back to neutral. Yeah. And I I read a lot of books, man. I enjoy I enjoy reading. So that was that was kind of my game plan. For the weekend, you know, especially that's that that was really my process when I was doing really really well, was I would just kind of just shut down in between motos, yeah. you know, because if you spend if you spend the whole what is it sometimes three hours in between motos, yeah. worried about your next moto or worried about who's in the gate next to you, or worried about how bad your second pedal was the last moto, that was my that was pretty much my worry most of the time, right? It, it affects your next race, and so. The easiest thing to do is just shut it down by reading. For me, that was just my go-to. You know, some dudes listen to music, some dudes go on longer cool downs than necessary. You know what I mean? I, I read books. That was just my. That very was my. Cool. Very cool. So yeah. you you've been in the sport for a very long time, not only as a top rider, but yourself. You're but you're still in the sport now, doing the big stuff. What do you think is big difference in the sport now versus your big years in the in the early and mid two thousands? Oh man, it's it's definitely more of a show now. I enjoy being a fan these days. You know, um, I enjoy the big hill. You know, I I know, but I was always the racer that was pushing for the big hill. You know, back in the old days when I remember in 2005 during the world there in Paris at a big meeting and you know you just had guys in there that were so against the big hill. But I, me, and I remember standing next to Mike Day and we were there just like yes, like, who cares what they say. Like, they're fine. 
<laughs> build a big hill, you know? And so I, I love it. I love watching you guys race. There's, there's a lot of passing going on, you know? It's not like it's, it's stale. I mean, yeah, of course, there's those motos where it's a single-file train going down second straightaway. But I just recently saw a picture from, gosh, well, what, top where everybody's coming out of the first turn and there's eight dudes in the air on the first set out of the first turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, the one about George you know and, I mean? and, and seven that, other guys. That's not a race. Him, right? I don't know what is. So I enjoy being a fan these days. I'm bummed out on the, I know we're probably going to talk about this in a minute, on the payout and everything that they're getting these days for what they're doing. But I enjoy being a fan of the sport. So that's actually a perfect lead into the next question. You couldn't have uh, answered that any better. So part of the show that we're going to be talking about today is pro payout. Well, we're going to get in. We want we want some dirt from you, Bubs. Uh, you raced in an age where there was ABA, MVL, Class, Open, Cruiser, big sponsors, and all that stuff. Right. You don't. You have to give us exact numbers here. But uh, give it. Give us a ballpark number. Were, were Were you making? What kind of cash were you making back in the day? You don't have to tell us, but. Let's just say, were you making uh, north of 200K uh, in your I, heyday? I have no problem being completely honest. I think my best year was 130 or 125, right? That was one of my best years. Um, but we had we had more races at that time, you know, and my contingency with Redline was decent. So I could race. There, there was one year, you know, I have, a, you know, you guys were listening off my stats up. We were listening at Rebel Run before you guys called me. And, yeah, I made 200 main events, but I don't, I'm not trying to – like call myself out, but at the same time, we could race 24 nationals in one year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we had way more chances to get in the main event. We had way more chances to get on the podium. We had may- way more chances to earn the same exact money that these guys are making right now. And that's the $1,000 a win. Single Class now. And, open, whatever and then they're wanted. still paying them like we were getting paid. So that's, that's the hard part. It's like, since they're not even racing as much as us they should at least get paid double what we did right yeah um you know do you, doesn't what, that make sense no yeah. no it definitely makes 100 percent sense but i agree with you what do you think the biggest difference is is yeah, now, so. now in the sport these days from oh, yeah, I I asked that. Sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> so i guess the the next one was a, another question that i had um i remember khan's story but uh obviously you were you kind of go and um and, and kind of downward spiral um, and uh, the story that I don't know where the race was, but it must have been for the first time. And uh, John was in the red line truck driving out with Jason, and you two were yelling at each other. And John was screaming that he he built that truck that you get to sit in now, and yada yada yada. Do you, do you remember that story? You were new. That story is an intro for bringing him on the. I was with Double A Main in Colorado. Tackles aggression. Yeah, Come on, little guys. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, next question we got down here for you: uh, Do you think the sport has progressed as a whole or moved backwards? And if so, what would you change? The next, the whole has definitely progressed. Especially, I stepped back pretty hard. You know, I kind of. I just let myself kind of fade, you know what I mean? I didn't I didn't do what Don did, didn't have my retirement year, you know. But I was racing for a long time very sore, and I just one day I kind of made the decision not to, right? And since I have stepped back and I did, it's, it's been great for me because I just get, I'm just such a committed father, right? I just spend every day with my girls. But at the same time, I, I get to watch BMX from a distance, and it seems so much bigger nowadays. You know, like I'm almost jealous to where I wish I was good in that. Like I wish I would have been born a little bit later almost, you know what I mean? Just because of how great the sport looks nowadays. The Olympics were awesome to watch. Watching Connor and Nick do what they did, like being an American, obviously those are the guys I'm calling out, was amazing, you know? And so being a fan at the stage the sport is right now is great. Being an athlete at the stage the sport is right now maybe not so much you know yeah yeah i think that's a that's a pretty good question um tell us tell us a little bit like you you talked about some stuff you, that was a great another great lead into the next question about what you're up to now do you do, still do give us the run oh yeah man 
busy. Um, I am at home. I do every other Monday night at Ed Fountain BMX in Vegas. And then I do every Tuesday night in Black Mountain now from 6 to 9. Then I do every Wednesday night at AZ Pro Track. When I'm gone, like right now, I'm at Rebel Run. So I'm over here for the whole week. Carl Clark takes over my Black Mountain and Rebel Run clinics. Um, okay. So, so those you, will be going all week long. you drive out to Vegas every week and for then, this? Uh, just Rebel Run. I'm here for five camps this year. I'm excited for every single one of them. I, I, if everything would have worked out like a different way with my family and our new move, there was a very good chance we were moving out here, right? So mm-hmm. I just enjoy being here. This is like my, I just love it. You know, it's just being at Rebel Run's rad. So I'm excited for the five camps that I have here. I think I'm, I'm doing numerous camps with my dad this year as well, right? Just uh, fly-ins. I just fly into the camp and fly back home. I don't like being on the road as much as I used to be. Obviously, just because I have my two little ones at home. So, try to spend as much time at home as possible. So, I do fly in and fly out of my dad's camps now. I don't go on the road with him. But, yeah, man, I have a fully stacked summer. I'll be working every single week. So, I look forward to teaching and coaching a lot of kids I've already coached. Maybe see some new ones. But, we're just, the goal is to stay busy, right? Yeah, so, man, definitely. It sounds like you are busy. I think, I think three weeks ago, between my Vegas night, um, Black Mountain, Aso Track, and then we did a camp in Idaho. I think I coached like 107 families, ah. right? So obviously, a few of those families had more kids. So I'm just, I'm just trying to make myself available as much as possible. With growing up with Super Camp, and I've been coaching since I was 12, I just can relate to the kids really well. And these days, being where I, where I'm at in my life, and I love it. I just like. I just absolutely love it. Like, there was a good time there for a while, like, after racing. You know how that is. Like, you get done racing, you're not the man anymore. It gets hard, you know? Like, I didn't even like doing clinics there for a while. But now I'm at a stage where I'm a super fan. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't really care. I'm not up for any title. I can't believe that this is what I get to do for a living, yeah. you know? So I just, try to, I just try to go to the track every day. Someone's got to get faster, you know? So speaking of coaching, I mean, you grew up on the road with your dad doing that stuff and um, probably have more hours than, than anyone maybe in, in coaching in the sport. Um, did you find that that helped you as a pro? You know, we can... Makes perfect, right? But mm-hmm. just being at the... For that many hours and then you're... And you pick that up real quick. So yeah, demonstrations and make them perfect on top of your game. Obviously doing camps while I was a pro, yeah, that helps too. Yo, Bob, you there? I am, dude. I feel bad. Oh, Sorry. all right. We lost the, Bob's and we the lost... The third straightaway doesn't get very good reception. Don't worry about it, man. We were having some uh, internet complications at the same time, so it was... Uh it was a good time for you to cut out too. Uh, we're just we're just about good done. Deal. We're gonna finish things up. We got one more question for you. Big, most important one. Yeah, man, no worries. Will we be seeing Bubba Harris back on the gate anytime soon? Man, I don't think so. Tyler, I'm currently better than I've been in my entire life. I when I was winning my titles, I was two fourteen. Right now, I'm weighing in at two oh five. So I'm very ready to get back in the game like just athlete wise but uh-huh. man I just don't think so I don't think so I I know I couldn't keep up down the first straightaway I know I'd have some form on the track but I also know that coming back and doing it the right way is going to take focus off of my daughters and that's where I personally want to put my focus so Fair nope enough. I'll be a dad there you, nothing left to prove um we did have a question before it cut out. I think Coach G asked, was there ever a clause in your red line deal not to race NBL? Uh, no, there wasn't a deal in my red line deal. To not, like, obviously, red line would like me to race everywhere. But at the same time I was doing my ABA career, I was also had a full-time job with my dad coaching super camps. And we, that was my family's business, and we had to work. And the best way for us to work was on off weekends of ABA Nationals. So I always made sure I had a good balance so I could do my dad's camps and at the same time I could race BMX. So they just, all of our big camps, like we would have summer camps on ugh, the worst weekend, like summer. Yeah, man. 
days dual solemn pump races. Like I missed every single one of those because of summer games, you yeah. know. But I wouldn't change anything at all. But we were just more focused on our camps at the time than running two sanctions. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Cool, Bob. Well, hey, man, we just really appreciate the time. Thanks for calling in and hanging out with us. It was awesome to chat with you and get some insight from one of the one of the best in the game. Yeah, man, no worries. Thanks for considering me. Thanks for calling me. Sam, I'm going to come down there soon. We're going to catch up, man. I'm going to do a, I'm going to be in studio. Yes, soon. That'll be awesome. That's Anytime, cool with you. Let us know. All right, guys. Well, thank you for everything, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, Thanks, sounds Bob. good, Bob. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Man, what a guest, huh? Yeah, Bob is always good for a chat and uh, always fun fun at the pub as well. That that guy, I mean, he's he's definitely like, I, I mean, it's it's cool because I did grow up racing him, so we have a bit of a history with him, but he, he for sure changed the game. So I, And I think, like, I grew up racing him, but you probably grew up watching him. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I grew up watching all the videos of Bubba, and, and when I came over, Bubba was kind of at the tail end of his career. It was after his injury, he was trying to trying to come back and um and that sort of thing but Bubba was always really cool to me every every time I spoke to Bubba you know I was new on the scene and whatever else over here and yes yeah. a young kid but he was always super nice super genuine and and the best the coolest thing I think you said a story about how you found that Bubba respected you once you started competing against him like he just loved to compete like he loved competition and he embraced that which is which is rare these days you know no he really did and so, that was that was a story that I was telling Sam the other day it was uh, we were amateur racing and I looked up I mean Bubba was like the top guy in the sport and he was he was kind of my goal as somebody to beat you know you got to beat Bubba Harris if you can beat Bubba Harris you're the man well it was kind of on a on a pedestal so to speak and Bubba never talked to me he was that big factory guy. I was that young kid coming up. He never talked to me at all. And I'll always remember this. The first time that I beat Bubba is when he started talking to me. Yeah. So it was cool because was there were other... normally the opposite. Yeah, there was normally... Yeah. There was your other guys that would talk to me until I started beating him. Bubba never seemed to have that really respect until like once I beat him, he's like, all right, cool. You're a player now. What's up? Yeah, Come yeah, hang yeah. out, you know? Yeah. No, he's a, he's a good guy for sure. And tons of knowledge, you know. It still surprises me that like in this day and age of, uh, you know, Olympic time and everything's competitive that that the U.S. hasn't grabbed Bubba and given him a job as, in a coaching role. Because, I mean, you can't deny his mental approach and the things he did in the sport. Like, he is just, he's, he's probably, you know, un, He probably has more coaching yeah, yeah. than anybody in the world. More coaching, yeah. but also just his approach. Like, he, he had his own philosophies and his own theories, and, uh, and what he did worked. And, and he was, like I said to him on the interview, like, he was intimidating. Like, you show up to the race, you look at Bubba, like, no one wanted to get in the gate next to Bubba, and everyone freaked out when they heard the announcement saying Bubba Harris on the move. Yeah, so. yeah, nothing like being fourth place in a semi and hearing that. Yeah, I mean, I heard that a few times when I first come over here. So did I. So and did all I. of a sudden, you start bonking everything. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a killer interview. Thanks for Bub for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, what do we have next up on the show, Sam? So uh, yeah, next up, I guess we'll go into our answer, answer forks. What do I need? My I need my forks. Put a fork in it. Segment. All right, we got our answer fork. Put a fork in. It. You got the black. I got the white. So, um, so if you guys have any questions on the chat rooms for our answer forks, put a fork in it. Segment. Chuck them in now, and uh, we'll do a few of these real quick now. So you can go first. I'll start off first, Sam. Uh, let's see. First up on the list, Pock helmets. Put a fork in them. No. They've, they've got to go. You're not a fan. Pock helmets have got to go. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, ooh, here's a good one. Racing in shorts. I was a corporate of it. I did do it in 09, but it's time to put a fork in it. I think we all did it. It looks so bad. So that's all I'll agree with you. You got to put a fork in it, even though I know I did it too. Don't Never anybody did. watching. What? Never did it. Yeah, Nick's, Nick's, Nick's cooler than we are. He's proud to say. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't ever do it. GPO, right. you ever wear shorts? Yeah. 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 No, like racing shorts, not wear shorts. <laughs> All right, let's see. We got anybody commenting on carbon, carbon rims? Carbon rims. Leave them. They're fine. That, that's progression. Progression. There you go. All what right. Do you think? Oh, I don't have a problem with carbon rims. I actually have some okay. on my bike right now. Get the Zelvi carbons on. So. All right. Here's one for you. Belt drive. Fork in it. Fork in. <laughs> Just like it, and until it's tested, I don't know. I've never personally ran in it, but I'm I'm gonna fork that one. I'm gonna stick with my regular chain. I'm gonna fork it. Belts are for your pants. Yeah, belts are for your pants. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? So uh, we did flat pedal racing last week. 
Did we? Yes. I couldn't remember. Either way, I'm going to four. Oh, ride in flat. Uh, uh, Crowley Forks. Crowley Forks? There's nothing wrong with Crowley Forks. Okay. I've, I've ran plenty of Crowley Forks that are pretty good. So okay. I'll keep Crowley Forks. OS 20. You know what? I actually legit, I rode one and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. But there's no, like until there's like, until you can buy a tire and a tube to go with it, I'm going to fork it. I'm going to, I'm going to, Fork it for now, but I would think that would be a really good bike for like an older guy who raced cruiser who wants to race 22. Okay. But for right now, I'm going to fork it because there's just not enough product available. So, fair cool, fair cool. Fork it. All right. Um, we've already done the disc brake question. Yeah, we already we forked that. disc brakes last week. Disc brakes are stupid. Get Nick, rid of them. Nick's happy oh. with the disc brake. Nick loves them. Nick can Nick keep his. Nick needs a disc brake for his back. Needs, yeah. He needs it for his back. Yeah, he <laughs> needs to stop faster. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, MX helmets or BMX helmets? It's not really, a, it's fork not really in it. a fork in it question. I mean, personally, I know I've been running a BMX helmet the last couple of years. I ran the Troy Lee that you ran for many, many years. I also ran the, the Fly BMX helmet now. So I got nothing wrong with the BMX helmet. Yep. We'll keep it, but it's not really a fork it. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much... Yeah, I have no idea what that other guy just typed in there. Skipping chest day. Oh, fork in that. You can never skip chest day. I'm going to fork <laughs> skipping chest day to keep chest day. Yeah, I you don't put a fork in chest day. No way. You're racing, just, just. <laughs> Pet peeve for me. Put a fork in it. Yeah, put a fork, fork in it. it. You, you, want, you want a uniform company to start paying you, but yet you're going to do a majority of your training in your Adidas sweatpants? Yeah, it's terrible. Especially like a sweatpants. Yeah, and it, look, it just looks bad. Put a fork in it. I know I was, when I was a Ford uniform. There you go. Power. Put a fork in it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think tires. Fork in that one too. We'll put the forks away. What do we got next? We got our in-studio guest. Uh, next is our in-studio guest, Main Lane Anthony Dane. Why don't you refresh that so, and see if uh, our setup or that one? Are you guys getting that over there? Oh, you're not watching. <laughs> They don't need to watch it. They're seeing it like, all right, good. It's really looks boring. Like, looks like we're streaming here. All right, guys. So we're putting the forks away. We've got the man, the myth, the legend. Dino. Can you just give it to me one time how they do it in Australia, how they announce him? Main Lane Anthony Dane. Lane Main Anthony Dane. We should have brought up an old video with that. With some, some we actually should have. Announced we actually should have. Screaming Main So Lane you, Anthony. you guys have a bit of a history. So, um. Get this one going so far. Together, we seven. And Anthony was the fastest kid in South Australia. Oh he man, the, there he is. That was the guy. For you, that was the guy that, <laughs> that you wanted to beat. We always used to, at the time, Anthony's uh, original name as a kid was Fafaro. And we it was used, what? Fafaro. Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> we, and we used to call him Anthony Fafasto. Fafasto. Because we wanted. Oh, he was like the fastest kid. So, um, yeah, me and Anthony have known each other for, I guess that's almost... Um, but, um, yeah, something that I know about you is when you were around, was it, 2013, so it wasn't because you weren't ranked in Australia for a while. Fill us in about floors, and then... Like Sam was saying, we were working full time and uh, just kind of said, traveled to some World Cups with Tyler and always tried to get on the Australian team. And then, yeah, they just, dogged you for years, they, they years, dogged you. Years. <laughs> they, <laughs> and now you're the boss, years. you're the big dog, yeah, you're, the, top, you're the, the boss show. of the team. He's the CEO. Yeah, he runs it. He runs it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your season thus far. We touched on it a little bit last time you were on the show. You're a favorite for the Olympics. After that, we saw a pre-Olympic training put to use. You killed it. You went and you won the Grands. You won the season opener in Phoenix, taking a first and second there, killing it. Um, after that, you've kind of had a I think you're always a top contender, but what's it going to take to get you back? Just had a bad you got to feed the geese to keep the blood flowing. And, and go for the training block and, you know, hopefully I can get back there and get back into form and, yeah. 
So just a little bit of time off, let the body heal from the end you've had thus far. And you've made like every world's main since 2012, right? Yeah, first my first world, yeah. Last okay. Year. Made the Olympics. Yeah. Nice. Like north and south is up. Yeah, yeah. North is up. I don't know a few, a few, a few. It's definitely yeah, helped me out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. glad it's around. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, so I guess like yes. Speaking of sponsorship, and now you've uh, you've made it to the top, mate. You're at the you're at the top of the game. Uh, um, 2017. Um, I mean, sponsorship wise, financially wise, like, like you set. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah not, not as. I mean, I'm doing alright. You know, I'm not, not what I want to be, but it's. You know, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with it, and can always do more. But um, I kind of put my own thing together this year, and I mean, I'm, I'm definitely happy from each individual one. That, yeah. You wanted to, or was it just kind of? I want, I want to ride in uniforms. I want to ride Shimano stuff. Contacted mm -hmm. me. Supercross cross till the end. Of, I mean, I really wanted to do Troy Lee as well, as well as Supercross, and so we just just wait. I just waited for that and just kind of put my eggs in that basket and really went for them too and just put it all out there and, and kind of gave them a commitment that I really want to be with them. And for sure, you know, I'm stoked to, to finally get it done at the end of January. And yeah, I mean, yeah. So kind of going back to the question that I was talking about a little bit before in social media stuff, um, what do you think being that you all, you do have a pretty good social media presence? What do you think is more important on the meet on at the end of a weekend from those sponsors? Do you think it's you going out and getting on the podium in elite men or the social media side of it, promoting your sponsors, say Monday through Thursday, or what you do at the races Friday, Saturday. Man, that's a hard question. Yeah. I, I still believe that winning or podium sells bikes. I strongly believe that. And I mean, you look at Chase. I mean, Joris and that. Yeah. I think win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Sell on Monday. I still believe it. No racing on Sunday anymore. So if you yeah. won. That's it. Yeah. That's why they're not selling. Yeah, yeah true. exactly. I think social media has a lot to do with it now. I mean, not just BMX, but anything. Um, but I still believe being at the front definitely sells bikes. And um, I think it's just trying to blend the two. And that's really it. Yeah. I think that's the goal. Trying just to blend being both. the complete package. I think that's what it is now. Yeah, you know? being not only... I the... think you need to be at the races. I strongly believe that you need to be on the podium. I still believe that sells. So. But social media also, I think. But how do you juggle well. the two? So a lot of guys, easy, a yeah. lot of the guys struggle with some of that. Maybe they're one or the other, but there's not that often that there are the combo. So how do you juggle the two? I think it's hard to juggle the both to really get good content for social media that people love and enjoy. That does take effort and time, I believe. Um, but I also believe, you know, you can, people love someone who's winning and they're always going to like their stuff and follow them. So... Yeah. It's hand in hand. I think if you're not doing great at the races, social media makes up for it. Yeah. If you're doing really good, you don't really have to really put too much into social media. Yeah. Off to the bathroom, work one out anytime um, you can. And when you get really good at it, prefer? you'll fucking be stroking it. You'll be thinking about the money. That's regular pretty BMX always. standard question for the yeah. regular. I, 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 I like Supercross on a big track. And I just feel like Supercross, you really have to prepare. For me, especially, I really have to... Put a good block in, like for the Olympics, and but you're so good at supercross racing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you are. Like, you've got a handful of podiums and stuff like that. So, yeah, I find it. I mean, I really like the flat tracks, and you know, there's not as much risk, I guess, is involved. And I just like that grinding. Um, but I think you know, if you're really focused on supercross and put all your time into it, I do like that as well. So, very cool. that's yeah, it's a hard one. Very cool. So one thing that people might not know about you is you used to be big in a freestyle. You've got a massive bag of tricks. Tell us a little about, well, for one, about your freestyle background, and for two, as a kid, when you had all that going on, what made you ch chose racing over continuing the freestyle side? He was also really good on a scooter. Yeah. 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 A scooter? As, a ki as kids, we were like big scooter riders we were. Yeah? yeah. Like you could do tail whips? You could do triple oh, tail whips. Yeah, triple yeah. tail whips! <laughs> you guys... We were those scooter kids annoying everyone. <laughs> yeah. uh, both of you guys were. We were both of us, yeah. Nice. Were you sponsored? Yeah, yeah. No, no uh, scooter no, sponsors? No, no, no. no. Big, 
Nah, but you we would have been scoring. But you were a free. You were pretty good at free. Don't act like you're yeah. not impressed. I did BMX till I was probably you know. I still race BMX all the time, but then I took freestyle like seriously from maybe 17 till 19, maybe two years, and started doing some competitions. And you know, I haven't done it for probably about five years, but I just went to Barry Noble's, you know, last year and tried on his resi like on his one of his ramps, and I was surprised to still have a lot of tricks. That this I could dude, do back fir- in the day. first run pulls out a. Yeah, you were there. You were yeah, there. I was there. He comes out of nowhere, firing off a Superman tail whip, like stretched all the way to the moon. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 I had a big bag of tricks back then. But, so, but what made you pick? Because you could have gone either way. You could have gone freestyle. You could have gone racing. What made you pick racing over the freestyle side? I think I had a belief that I could go further in BMX than what I could in freestyle. Freestyle is a very, especially in Australia, you really have to be. I believe like a real standout kid, you know. There's there's kids now that are yeah. 14 doing double backflips. Yeah, you, you own skate effects, man. I, yeah. <laughs> I own the skate effects, you know. <laughs> right, I don't know. But I think I just had a better belief that BMX could. I always wanted to be in America, you know. Yeah. And I think racing kind of gave me that belief that I could be here more than freestyle. And I think I just, you know, uh, if I could take it back now, I'd probably. If I could be good at freestyle, I'd probably live that lifestyle because it looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> there you For go. Sure. Um, so I guess, what, yeah, what are your goals beyond racing? I mean, you, you spoke about you're doing some charity stuff and uh, is that something that you see yourself doing in the future? or? Um... Uh, for about three years with Dale Holmes Racing, we did um, some school stuff and I kind of just like helping, you know, kids and, and things like that. I really like helping underprivileged kids, so... I really, you know, that's something I would like to do is helping, uh, you know, youths and stuff like that in orphan homes and stuff. And yeah. I'm starting to try and do it now and doing a little bit more going to see, you know, children's hospitals and things. And, you know, I like um, a lot of things I want to do. So yeah. it's kind of. So one of our next questions is, is how long do you see yourself continuing in the sport? It does sound like you have a lot of ambitions beyond BMX racing. How much longer are we going to see Dino on the gate? Yeah, I don't know. I question myself every uh, every crash, you know. Yeah, fair enough. I, I think we all question do. myself. But you know, I think uh, it's hard to say when the end is. But you know, some sometimes I feel like it could be really soon, and then you know, I feel the feeling of being at the Olympics mm-hmm. um, the last time, and you know, I was performing so well, and I and I made the mistake at the end, and I, that definitely motivates me. And you know, yeah. it's it's sometimes my mind is worth to go for that next one and, and to have that feeling again and to relive that feeling because it was such a good feeling just being there. So, you know, I think it can, you know, that's probably something that I, I might do is, you know, go for another three years to the Olympics and, and I think that will, you know, after that it could be the end of the road. Yeah. So you're not, not no Salt Lake this weekend. We touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, will you race again before the Worlds or is it just full steam ahead going for this world title? Yeah, I think just, uh, I'll see come closer to Pitts, I think it's Pittsburgh. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll kind of decide then, but as I stand right now, I'm just going to go full force for the world. Yep. I think I race better when I you know, have a good training block. And I, since my injuries this year, I haven't really had a good um, a good block. So I really just want to put in a good six weeks and a good six to eight weeks and, and just go all out there and yeah. have a good back back end of the year. There's lots of races at the end. I'll go to Grand Junction and you know do all them. So I wouldn't mind just having a bit of rest now and going hard for the rest. Yeah, there you so go. So Eric Grindle, the USA DMX announcer. He uh, he's our guy up there in NorCal. He he's asking how your neck how's your neck doing after that? Yeah, tip over it's in still Nashville. Like, I think I've had a headache for what is it ten days now. You so doing like this, where you like you can't stubby, turn, you doing the whole body I, turn. I can't sleep on my right side yet, but it's still super stiff. I'm mean, I just got bad whiplash, and you know it's just um, it's gonna take a little bit, but just headaches and but I'm actually getting my front teeth done now, which I'm spewing about. So I actually fractured the top two front teeth there from the crash. So that's what's going to suck because that's going to be a four week taking these out putting the ones in so quit doing that stuff dude. oh man quit doing not... that one of the vans got him yeah he, he got banned he got parked by a van <laughs> he got he, parked he owed me from 2015 so <laughs> <laughs> alright man this is our last question this was sent in from one of the one of the fans uh, being that you did just make a switch this is a good question for you what's better carbon or aluminum frames honestly I think carbon I, I mean I re- like I really love the carbon, just the stiffness out the gate. Um, 
like I said, I rode carbon rims for a little bit. And I wasn't the biggest fan of that. I think I'll always stay to still. I mean, yeah, is it alloy wheels? Yeah. I think I'll stay to them, but I really like the carbon frame and the stiffness. And I've always been kind of not against it, but just kind of nervous because I'm a bigger guy. But hesitant. Hesitant, but Sam sold me on carbon. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, look how good he is doing so. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool, man. Well, that's uh, that's about the only questions we have for you on Sweet. the show today. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're more than welcome Thanks to keep hanging out for the show, bro. Get yeah, the rest you know of the what? show. Will, man. Yeah, just, <laughs> just jump on. Uh, yeah. Sam, what do, what do we got next coming so up on the next show? Next up, we got uh, new, one of our new segments from last week, Video of the Week. So uh, this is a good this, one. This one, yeah, we, we kind of stole from David Graff, but it was uh, too good not to share. This one is a good one. Let me see if... Um, I can't believe it's a real race. It's Like, it's, it doesn't look real, but... There's more going on in this <laughs> race than any race ever. Sam's got a big uh, We're going to close mouths, not Call him, huh? One for me. Let's get it. You're going to call it out in the air? Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> no, Ladies, just, tune in. Just, just let you put it in right there. The handsome <laughs> Sylvan. Uh, That one right there. Then I'll then I'll call him back. Sylvan, if you're listening, get ready. All right, phone lines are open. They are up on your screen there. So, all right, it's six one. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, let's give Sylvan Andre a call. Sam, you want to intro anything you want to say about this guy before we give him a shout? Ah, uh, Sylvan's. One of those guys, I mean, he won junior, junior Worlds and then he kind of disappeared a little bit and then he's been really strong this year. So yeah. he won a World Cup and been around the mark of every race. Super talented on his bike and pretty happy, go lucky, fun guy at the races. So he, he loves to race. This guy to loves to him. race. I remember sitting at Grands and he was asking us in the bleachers, he goes, what do you like more, one main or three? And he liked three mains, not for any other reason other than you get to do more racing. Yeah, yeah. So the guy just loves some time on the bike. So let's give Sylvan a call right now and get a little bit more insight from him. Hopefully he answers. We know he's out at Boulder City Max taking some practice gates tonight. Yo. Bonjour. Bonjour, ça va? Ça va et toi? Bien, bien. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> Whatever that means. Sylvan, what's going on, dude? I'm good, I'm good. We're uh, we from Maine in Boulder City. Nevada, Las Vegas, which is cool. Okay. That's so, cool. so hanging out in Vegas for a little while. How 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 long are you out there for? Uh, we came here after Nashville. I'm using uh, I'm staying at Trent's house as he's back in New Zealand for for his knee, and uh, we are driving to Salt Lake, and then we're back to France. Perfect. Perfect. Cool, man. So we got a few questions for you. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy training schedule to give us a call and uh, go through them. Um, number one, we kind of talked about this when we were just kind of introing you. You've had a really breakout season this year. You uh, you won the USA BMX Super, Supercross race last year. You've had some really so solid podium finishes. Uh, what do you think has been the biggest factor in your recent success? Sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear you. Was there a reason off? I said you've been killing it lately. Uh, you had a really good breakout. You. you had a breakout year this last season. You won the the ABA Supercross round last year, and now you've got some really good podiums this year. Um, winning the World Cup, all that stuff. What do you think's the biggest difference in your season this year? I think coming to the US uh, for three months at the beginning of this year helped me a lot. You know, like training with fans dudes every day. I'm used to training all just by myself, so. Like, yeah, it can be good sometimes, but sometimes you need, you need guys with you so you can compare, so you can get some extra motivation. So I think this, this helped me a little bit this year. I guess on that on that question, who who do you train with or, you know, coach or do you do your own thing? Or? My my coach is, uh, is Nick, Nico. You, you must have seen him. He was in the, in the French team stuff. Is the one that coach Lemmy do too? The one that looks like Mick Jagger? 
The, the one looks like you, basically. I, I got a picture I will send you after, after the call. He was uh, riding on, um, on the red bike when he was elite, like, a few years ago. And he pretty much looked like you. I sent him a picture. Like <laughs> so he's a rough look fella, huh? Yeah, he's pretty a, ugly. He's a, he's a pretty ugly fella, right? <laughs> All right, you there? Can you still hear us? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, cool, cool. So we're going to jump into the next question. Uh, what is uh, this is a pretty easy question being that you are a euro guy this was actually sent in by your countryman Joris he said uh, uh -huh. what's, the, what's the biggest difference between racing at euro rounds versus USA BMX and we're talking everything the racing the promoting the events the beer garden the atmosphere the competition what's the biggest difference between the two the question uh, first we get the tracks I think tracks are a little better in Europe because obviously like longer track more technical so you can there's more passes in like in Europe than, than there is in the US. Then, like, I don't know, I, I think I would take USA BMX ABA races because obviously the level is, is completely different. It's, it's pretty much a World Cup. Like, every man is like five or six guys doing the World Cup, the finals and everything. And, uh, what about the atmosphere? I think Europe has a better atmosphere. Like, the fans love love watching the elites maybe like when we race in the u.s there's just nothing no, no one yelling at you is like supporting you <laughs> yeah. but uh, well, it's it's a hard one to pick it's a hard one to pick so for today i'd say aba if if they go back to the previous payout yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. i guess that's kind of a, a bit of a theme of our show tonight we're going to get into that after your interview but um w what is the current entry fee slash uh, ratio to pay out in, in a Euro round right now and what's the overall uh, uh, I think uh, like a Euro round is about the entry fee per day must be like 60 Euro and you can get 1600 okay. so it's about so it's about half the half the entry fee and double payout or close to it yeah right in the US now with the new with the new thing we pay 130 bucks or 1000 bucks in the win and then, it, and then the tax to foreigners so you win nothing at the end. And, and how many euro? How many euro rounds are there in in a season? There are five weekend, I think. So like two two races a weekend. So yeah, it's a ten, ten, uh, ten races, so so, which is yeah, not that much. But five weekends overall. Yep, five weekends. And we got the at the end of the year we got the the euro um, like championship, which is like not a round. It's just like one race, one day race. So where you get the jersey and everything. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So yeah, that's not a lot. But if you like, if you like the guy like Romain or Jeremy, they also race the French Cup. So they race like four, four or five French Cups uh, a year plus the year round, which is which is quite a busy season too. So then there still is like a full year year round season then. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. What? So I guess we'll get into last year. I mean, you missed out on the Olympic team. Um, obviously, you were kind of a kind of a shoe in going into the world championships it seemed like and you had a crash in the time trial and then um yep. Renkel ended up getting fourth and, and and you missed it um yeah fill us in a bit on what happened there and uh how you kind of took that like I didn't have the same thing that happened to me in, in 12 because I was like okay I was scoring the point in one I did the, the podium at the world in uh, in, in England and, and got in gravity sport this year was be different because like I couldn't even had a chance to do something on race day like in in uh, in England in 12 I crashed in quarter so I was all by myself so this year I knew like I, th I thought I, I could do it still I could do it but then Jerry was was on fire this day and he was like almost winning the, the semi and that was his day so um, he grabbed he grabbed a, a spot in the final that was, yeah, that puts him in the Olympics, and then it's, it's what it is. I'm not going to say, like, it's not much for us, but, yeah, it is what it is. It was up hill to swallow, but there's more races to come for me. I'm just 24, so there's next Olympics, and obviously more more season to come, too. Right. So is it, did, you, did you take it, you obviously took it pretty well, and um, still cheering for those guys at the Olympics, or were you... Pretty yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nothing, uh, nothing wrong with Jeremy or anyone in the team. I just, I just took it. Uh, the coach made, a, they all made a decision, and it, it was this decision, this, this decision. 
So I was like, okay, I'll take it. I just, I just didn't want to go there because I was supposed to to go there and train with them as we did in, um, as I did in, in 12. I just asked them to like give a reserve alternate spots, but I did just like few training myself and uh, yeah, so I was like far from, from everything, which was good for me because like I took the pill at the world and, and that's it. Yeah. There you go. So you've been, uh, you've, you've been spending a lot more time out here in the USA. Do you see yourself making the move over here in the future and focusing more just uh, mainly on the USA BMX series? I wish I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could, but uh, to be honest, with uh, the, the new payout there is this year, just like you can't unless you win every every race as Joris does or, or those guy. But if if you don't do that and get the, the great sponsor and you win the races, there's no way you can you can afford living in in San Diego or somewhere and go at the races. And, so yeah, I wish I wish I could do that. Maybe it's not the good the good timing, but uh, yeah, I will race this year. Like I, I I'll stay after the the Rock Hill to Colorado. I come for the Brands. But yeah, I did it this year because yeah, I wanted to do it, do it at least once in my in my career. So like race almost the entire series, but it just cost too much money. So yeah, I pay for the dream for one year, and uh, and I think that's it, which is sad. All right, so. The- um, bit of a question off the, off the, off the cuff here. Um, I mean, with all these national teams, I mean, everyone's everyone's buddies when we got the jerseys on, and you're at the, at the races and we're all teammates. But um, do all you French guys get along pretty well, or is there some rivalries in the team, or what's the deal there? No, we we get along pretty well because we know we know everyone for for a ride. We... Like some of the guys are training together, like Romain and Jeremy, they're pretty much living together in the in the same time in Paris. Amidou and I have the, have the same coach. Everyone is is okay with Jeremy, so yeah, this is this is cool because we are like five guys like in the team for this year, and there's no like bad competition. You all you always want to do better than than the other guy next to you, but at the end of the day, we're just friends and we have a good time, and uh, yeah, which is cool. Now, who do you see? Who do you see as the biggest threat in the elite men cl- class right now? Not the USA BMX series. We're talking at the world on a worldwide level. Who's the biggest threat, and what do you think it's going to take from you to beat him? I think Joris is uh, Joris is obviously the one the one the, to look for because he's uh, the super consistent guy. And uh, yeah, if I had to pick one for the for the title, you say that that be him or or Maris? Because like on Sunday, Maris can. Can go up in one eight, and uh, someday he can he can win the race and destroy everybody. So I'd say Joris for this one, Frenchie. There you yeah. go. Who would win in an arm wrestle out of you and Anthony? Sorry? Who who would win in an arm a real wrestle out of you and Anthony? Straight up wrestle. I think Anthony. I, I think Anthony would break that. <laughs> cool man. Cool. <laughs> yeah. He's always always feeling the yeah. MMA gym stuff, so yeah, I'm really good at it. All right, we have a, another question about uh, what what happened with the gate choice when uh, there was rumored that you cheated in Old Smile with the gate gate selection. Oh wow, cool! So now <laughs> I can explain the story in live, so everyone can know. So uh, listen, so it was a five man quarters. It was in Old Small. So it was Corbin and Connor, they went one and two. Don't know if it was Corbin and Connor or Corbin or, or whatever. And then it was it was Nick. And so he didn't want to be in between Quentin and me, Quentin was backing his lane as the fifth guy. So he went on five or six. six? Nick, was it five or six? six? At first. Six. That was six, okay. So he took six. So I, I took the lane, uh, I took three. Because he thought Quentin would go on five and he would have like three lane next to him, but uh, I took three and I think Quentin would go outside of Nick so he can just follow him into the turn. So they went six and seven, and at some point that I didn't see at first, Nick asked the, the USA BMX guy, can I go on the inside or something? And the guy said, yeah, of course you can do whatever Nick <laughs> told you. So he went on five. I still had like uh, a free lane on my right, and the gate. I think that the, the previous one was on the gate, ready to go. So we were a minute about a minute to go, and uh, and then Quentin went on six. So I was like, it was. I had two free lanes with those guys on the outside, and like 35 seconds after that, they were on 
five and six, and I was like, yeah, no, this is this is not that you just pick your line and uh, and stick to it. <laughs> so then they were like, oh, blah blah blah, for sure, Frenchy, and went back on six, <laughs> 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 and he didn't make it. Ah, Coven, Coven hit him, hit him in, uh, before the first turn, and, uh, and I got him. It, yeah, that was funny. So this is my version. Okay. Okay. Anything you want to add to me? No, that was, I mean, that's a pretty fair description of the story. We'll leave it at that. Okay. All right, that is the end of the story. So, uh, Sylvan, that was all the questions we have for you, man. We want to thank you for letting us uh, letting us bug you for a little bit after your training night. One, one more. Oh, da David one Graff more. asked, um, what do you think about the French team not filling all their spots at the Worlds? Uh, the civic drama, maybe, yeah, if you see on the internet. I think... The thing is, like, it's not about the, the BMX team that made the decision. It's um, the federation made this rule like like five, six years ago. So that even they they applied this rule to the mountain bike, track cycling, everything before they they did it to us. So it's been four years, three years in the same way. So only the the guy in the team makes it to the world. And uh, but to make the team, they made some like uh, criteria. Yeah, I don't know what's what's the word for, but we had to get one final out of the, out of the four World Cups or being in the top 16 in order to be in the spot. And, uh, and only four guys did it. I mean, we got a spot because it was the Olympics last year, whatever. So then, yeah, six guys, five guys, uh, six guys are, are in the team, and and that's it. So they don't fill the the next um, the other three spots available. But yeah, it's. It's sad for the guy who can who can just go there, but uh, yeah, this is the rule, and uh, we all know that for for a long time. And you don't have to complain when it's when just the coach tells the selection. So yeah, it's it's a sad thing, but um, I think it's the same in uh, in many countries. I know the Dutch has the same rule. So yeah, it, is it the rule and uh, the the mix program? So you you gotta to follow it. <laughs> <laughs> Rules are rules. All right, dude. <laughs> well, you enjoy your night. Thanks for the thanks for the time. Thank, thanks for letting us uh, bug you for a bit and uh, enjoy the Vegas heat. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I hope I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much money in the casino because I'll be broke and I can't go to Salt Lake then. So yeah, we'll take it easy for a main. Yeah, well, you could uh, win in Salt Lake and make enough pay for one night at the casino. Oh yeah, I'll make fourteen hundred bucks if I win two days. Oh wow, <laughs> I can't pay for my flight. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. All right. Sylvan. So, he kind of put in a good little intro to our next segment there. What are we going to talk about next? I think the the uh, elephant in the room is pro payout has been all year. Yeah, this has been one that the reason that we wanted to bring this one up on the show is because... Phone Every, lines are open. Yeah, phone lines are open, so we got that 1-800 number. Feel free to give us a call. Nothing's ringing on the phone yet. But every time we ask questions, it's always a topic. People always want to know what's going on with the pro payout. So I think let's just let's bring it up. Let's jump right into let's it. Let's rap about it. We got some pros here in the house. We got a guy that's cur Nikki. currently living off the pro payout. Jukio. <laughs> Jukio's living off the yeah. We got one that killed it for many years off the pro payout and we got a little bit of everything here. So, All right. how do you want to start it out? What what what's the situation for everybody that knows? Um, I'll, how about you kind of give an intro? I'll pull up some questions that people had. What's going on with the pro payout? And we know it's been a big drama. So for those that may maybe have been under a rock all year, what's going on with the pro payout? Where were we? Where are we at now? Well, basically, I think the pro payout basically got cut in half, or more than half, really, seventy percent or something. So. Um, I mean, it used to be based on right account and that, you know, men and women, uh, it was separate. They, they had the equal scales if they had the same amount of riders, but um, there, was a, there was a purse. So I believe if you had over 25 riders, the purse was $10,000. And then obviously all the Supercross races were $20,000 payouts for the men. So three and a half win on a normal track and then seven grand on a regular, on a Supercross track. Um, and then the women had the same pace, you know, the same ride account scale, um, and then they had three and a half grand for a win on a Supercross track. Well, this year, uh, USA BMX said that uh, UCI brought in a rule that it has to be equal pay. So the uh, the ladies asked for it and they got it, equal pay, and um, 
So now, you know, USA BMX is kind of forced to pay equal pay to both men and women. Women. So whatever the men got, the women got. So I guess they opted to pay the minimum, which is a thousand dollars a win. So we have we have a lot of things going on here. We have we have a lot of different entities. You have it's not just USA BMX. It's USA BMX. It's USI, and you have the the pros in too. So we kind of have and the pros because they're the ones getting paid. So we kind of have three entities we have to look at. Mm -hmm. You know USA U, UCI kind of came in and said you, you made a stupid rule that you have to mandate it. Here was the problem with that rule, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with a tiered system, okay? Mm -hmm. If you work the front desk for 20 hours a week and I work the roof for 40 hours a week, I should get paid more, in my opinion. Yep. And the reason behind that is, is because if the men come out and they have 50 men and they're jumping a pro section and they're doing the bigger jumps and they have to do more laps, they're working more, but yet the women are going to get paid for an easier track and less riders. So I think the, the problem in my opinion before was a tiered system was great. If we both have 50 riders across the board, that's great, everybody be paid the same. But if one class has 10 and the other class has 50, that's my biggest my biggest issue with it personally. Yeah. What do you guys feel? I mean the flip side of it is as well that this was an, USA BMX in a way did, they're a business. Yeah. You know? And they, they came out at the start of the year and said, look, here's the deal. This is what it's going to be. They were upfront about it, and no one did anything. And, that's, so, and that is my biggest problem. That's like me going to my work site and you know, saying, you know, showing up. My boss shows up and goes, hey, uh, you're doing great. Keep doing the same thing, but we're going to cut your pay in half. Okay, cool. No worries. But so at, at some point, it's like, and, and I'm not saying that they, they, they should have striked and made a, you know, a rant about it, but... I don't know. Yeah, there should have been something. Yeah. In, in USA, you're 100 percent right. USA is business. They said, "Hey, these are the rules. We can pay. We can choose to pay more. We can choose to pay the minimum. Uh, maybe we don't agree that they chose to pay the minimum, but that's what they chose to do. They chose to do that. And the pros, as a as a group, could have done something about it. Instead, they went, "Okay, that's the pay. I don't like it. That's a bummer. I'll see you in Phoenix. Mm. You know what I mean? Now." I guess we got Anthony in here. Anthony, do you want anything to add on this? I see your blood starting to boil a little bit. Yeah. What, what's your feelings on the subject? I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. We needed to be together on that. And, you know, we started, I think a few of us were talking and we were going to think about doing something like that. And, and then I guess we were a little bit scared. I, I think a few you know, people backed out and, you know, not everyone was together. And I think in a situation like that, we, we everyone needs to be together and, and put it to the ABA and, you know, once people started pulling out for whatever reason, that's when it started to fall apart. And I think, you know, the whole group that was that was trying to do it, it started to fall apart because, you know, one person would pull out and, and I get the reasons why people had to. But, you know, I think we could have taken it to ABA and not so much made a strike. Like, like Sam was saying, we should have gone to them and said, hey, like, is there something we can do? And I think us as athletes need to bring something to the table as well. Um, you know, obviously we do for the racing, but you know we have had it very good for a long time with the ABA, mm -hmm. and I think you know maybe the the Supercross rounds that were seven grand a win, and if we could have spreaded that out to also the the other rounds where you know it could have they could have saved saved some money there because I think that's what blew it out. And well, now don't one, get me wrong, I love you know the one the thing that pay, Jason but, Carnes always talks about is he always say USA BMX puts up this massive payday and guys didn't show up. Do you think that that's, that's a big mistake that the, that the racers didn't show up on those races when they had seven grand for a win or 14 for a weekend when they were struggling to maybe get quarterfinals, semifinals at a lot of them? For sure. And I think and it's hard to because it came down to, you know, if you win, you make seven grand. Or if you get second, it was 3,500. It was still a very good payout, don't get me wrong. But I think it's, I think it's still, no matter how much they put up, it's mm -hmm. people getting to the races and it's expensive. You know, I think that's what didn't send people there. And I think... You know, it's also a big supercross track, and um, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I think if it was spread out more, and instead of it being just a huge 7,000, it would, you know, three grand every ABA round, or USA BMX, sorry, mm. it probably would have got a lot more um, people showing up. And I think, like, on the weekend at Nashville, there was, you know, there was only two gates of us, um, you know, and now that with the pay scale so less, I think we're going to see that a lot more. I don't think there's going to be many you know, double A pros showing up anymore to each round because, you know, like Sylvian was saying on the phone, it's, you know, even myself going to Nashville, it cost me $1,300 for the weekend going by myself, you know, and I had to win 
you know, at least one day to, to make half of it back and then, you know, podium the next day. And I think for a lot of people, it's, it's just not doable anymore. So do you see this as the potential beginning to the end of the AA Pro class if it continues to go this way? I strongly believe that, yes. I think, you know, not many people are going to shop anymore. Um, I think like Bubba hit a nail on the head when he said that, you know, it was the same pay back in the day, but you had so many opportunities to make that $1,000. And, and now there's not that many races. And I think, you know, something the USA BMX could do is, is maybe put on more nationals. You know, we can race it. If we could race every second weekend for the entire year and do every national, like Bubba was saying, for $1,000, I think that's still doable for, you know, USA BMX. And so, we're going to be at more local tracks, which is going to help, you know, the local tracks more. And I think, you know, we can go to, to these smaller nationals, but have it as a pro series. But they did compromise that a little bit as the elite men can now race every USA BMX race as they offer pro open. Right, but then how much is a pro open? And, you know, a lot of people, it's not, it's only, I think it's $600 a win or 300 It depends on the rider count. Right. So the more rider Since, count, the bigger the pay. So right. what, you're, what you're saying is, is that every race should be a USA BMX pro race. I think not every race, but a lot more. I think a lot more. Okay. Um, so a lot of chances to make that thousand dollars, if if that makes sense, because I believe if they have more of them, those events, that would be you know thousand dollars to put up or their purse. I think they can make it back by pros going to like you know a Chula Vista National and you know Lake Paris National. I think they can make their money back by having us there. Yeah, and I think Do you agree. I mean, I, I think what what people have to understand too is there, there's a lot of entities at work here. I mean, you got to look at the industry across the board. I mean, I think you felt it out as sponsorship wise. That this year was a really hard struggle for you. You had one of your best years ever, and the sponsorship wasn't there. We looked at we looked Redline leaving, you know. So the the industry is a bit of a struggle, and I think what USA BMX is saying is they're saying, hey, maybe we're not our payouts are were never designed to completely cover a rider's lifestyle. The, yeah. the, the the sponsor needs to pick up some of the slack too. The downside is for the current pro classes, the sponsorship isn't there, the payout's not there. Yeah. And I think everybody's struggling to go, okay, well 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 how does it work? You know, and and is that is that up to the sanction to do? I think the sanction has a lot of power in that myself and I think things can things can be made better. Um, but it also is gonna rely a lot on the pros too of what can what value can we bring to the table to help make these national events better so more people are there or more outside sponsors are there and bringing more money into it you know what i mean yeah i mean my thing with it all along was that i get the you know if uci forced on them that they had to pay equal equal pay to the you know to women and men that's fine but why couldn't have they just add it up. Okay, this is how much we paid out last year, whatever the number was. So for easy math, say that USA BMX paid a hundred thousand dollars last year between all the pro races. Yeah. Okay, so take that hundred grand, don't cut it in just say well, all right, we've got a hundred grand here still. We're gonna split it fifty fifty and we're gonna pay this much no matter what it what the right account is, whatever it is, it's still this is the pot of money in the, in the purse. And I always felt that as well with the series like USA BMX, why don't I, I never liked the you know ten wins for a title thing. I think it should just be every round counts. And and if you did that, maybe you'd see these guys having to be forced to show up at races, and and you'd have you know your full full amount of guys on the on the gate every week. Yeah. So let let's break this down. Anytime we've we've got a problem, we figure out solutions. Uh, what what in your opinion is the key the key problem to this? What do you think is the biggest thing? The UCI. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I think I think we'll all agree. You agree with that? I think I agree with it too. The biggest problem in this situation is is the UCI, um, the UCI mandating that equal pay. I, I get that UCI. You need to have UCI as a way to qualify for the Olympics. Rah 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 rah. But at the end of the day, I think we all agree that that's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's a no brainer as well. The ones that, uh, the one you know, they there's all these people that, you know, there's all these petitions out there. I guess of equal pay, and we have to do this, and we have to do that, and and it, you know it's no it's no secret who these people are that are making these these rants about it. Yep. But they're not at the races either. Not even yeah. So yeah. So if you're gonna rant about it, at least show, show up. Show up. Yeah. 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 But and that's where I think, in my opinion, I think there's nothing wrong with a tiered rider payout. I agree. Yeah. Because if we're gonna pay the same entry fee and have the same rider count, I have no problem paying the exact same amount. Yeah. But this didn't this didn't in any way help the elite women. It just hurt the elite men. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so um, another side of it, flip side of it. Now we know that the, the, the main problem we've all identified, what do you guys each think is, is a possible solution to this? 
something you I know we're just kind of throwing things. We're just we're just running this. We didn't plan this. We're not talking about any of this. I know it's something we've all talked about ourselves, but what do you guys see as possible solutions to this problem? The solution is I think that everyone needs to the same solution for a lot of issues in BMX. Everyone needs to get in a room collectively and have a meeting and get each other's side of the story from USA BMX, UCI to the riders themselves and, and actually, you know, people speak up and say what they're saying, you know, behind closed doors in a, in a controlled room and, and come up with a solution. And, um, I mean, I get USA BMX side of it as well, that they've paid, they've paid money for years. And, um, but at the same time, I also don't, I, I think it's wrong that UCI can dictate what they pay. I agree. I don't think, I think that's kind of weak that USA BMX has to just go, oh, okay, well, they're telling us that we have to do that, so we're just going to do that. Like, they don't have to do that. Yeah. They can, they can pay more out if they want to. Yeah. And uh, Anthony, you kind of said you think part of your solution would be more races. Yeah. I think, like, you know, like Bubba was saying back in the day, or like Sam was saying, you got the NBO and, and you had the USA ABA, ABA BMX, so you had so many races to make your money, you know, and I think now that, you know, USA has taken over, you know, the NBL, and that's the only thing, and, and we're all kind of locked into that. If you want to race in the US, you only have USA BMX to race, and, and they dictate everything, you know? They can, yeah. they decide the pay, and, you know, now we're not getting much, and we have no option. We can I go guess, and race in Europe, or... I guess my question to USA BMX would be as well, because they have, I mean, they, they provided a pretty good platform for us for the last couple of years. Like, I know I've benefited pretty significantly from the money that they put up at some of those races like you could go and race those supercross races and walk away you know I was fortunate enough to have sponsors and you'd make 30 grand in a weekend and those are good weekends and <laughs> yeah <laughs> not too shabby but, yeah but I'm just saying like that's the, that's the potential <laughs> that you could that you can make if, if you had the right sponsors and and whatever else and they they put that money up but my question to them would be like obviously they had to pay this equal pay but what what changed their mindset from like we wanna we wanna have the best pro series in the world we want all the pro all the foreigners to come here and race we wanna do this great they're doing all these great things and then all of a sudden in 2017 they just said well pump the brakes no way we're done you know we're gonna pay minimum now because that minimum was minimum always wage. there there's always been a minimum UCI yeah. payout like mm -hmm. if you hold a UCI category one race there's a minimum purse you have to pay and they always that was always there. But USA BMX chose to pay more. So what changed in the last year that they just said, uh, Yeah, done? the only thing that I can think of is maybe the lack of participation. I think that they were expecting to put this big series on and get 50, 60 riders. Yeah. And when they showed up and there was 25 guys, they weren't even getting the quarterfinals. Obviously, entry fees go up. So they were hoping that, I'm assuming, um, that they were hoping that they were going to bring in enough riders that entry fees were going to cover at least a good chunk of that purse. Mm -hmm. I think there was semis, there wasn't enough riders, and they ended up cutting a bigger check than they planned. I could just guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That could be my only thing. Yeah. Um, I think me, me, me personally. I think we got to look at things outside of the box. Is we're expecting a new across the whole industry. We're expecting a new answer. We're we're wanting more riders to come in the sport. We're wanting more bicycle sales. We're wanting races to get bigger. We're wanting to pay more money to the pros. Everybody's wanting more, but yet we do the exact same thing and expect a different outcome. We're going to run the same nationals, and the pros are going to do the same races. The the sanctions going to do the same thing. You see, everybody's going to do the exact same thing but we're expecting something more. I think we need to come collectively, like you said, in a room, and we need to look at what can we do to grow the sport as a whole. You know, is, is that more of show style events where we're selling tickets, um, you know, but who, who knows what that is? But I think we need to look outside of the box and think of what we can do. Furthermore, I think pros need to not be afraid to necessarily get their hands dirty. You know, I guess I'm in a different position now because I was a pro for many, many years. Um, I'm kind of, although I still race, race pro, whatever, I'm kind of to the end of my career and I work a full-time job. And I think sometimes the pros need to not be afraid to get their hands a little bit dirty. And what I mean by that is maybe showing up to an event early, you guys are all there a week early doing your four practices and doing all this, you know, maybe aren't, why doesn't anybody want to work with local, with the local dealers? And, you know, maybe I give you an example because you rode for Redline, a Redline at the time was a big one. Imagine if every race you would have went to a bike shop and done autograph signings at a couple dealers. Or maybe if somebody would have... What's that? <laughs> I say crowds would have flown in. No, but, but, but maybe <laughs> yeah, they, okay, yeah. they would have. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. that local bike shop would have shown yeah. some part to, some interest in the local BMX track or something like that. Everybody's wanting to go like, I want more money, but I don't want more work. 
you know, and, and, and we have to look at ways and maybe maybe the bike shop thing isn't the correct answer, but maybe there's something no, I mean, that there is. And we, if, if pros can't go, well, I want more money, I want more money, but I don't want to do anything else. I just want you to pay me more. I mean, I strongly believe like the, I follow the supercross and motocross. I mean, I try and do whatever I can to mimic that. And I think, you know, those guys do press days. Those guys do, yep. they do, you know, autograph signings of whatever sponsors ever before every race. They do so much media that you don't see more than what we do. We just show up and race. Exactly, exactly. But they have that, you know, they have those big sponsors that. And they do. And, they, and they get paid for that. And for, for sure, I agree. And and they're also going to get a million dollar contract from Honda or whatever exactly. else they're to do that stuff. You know, but. Yeah, I'm getting we're only getting hundreds sometimes if you can even get that from some of your sponsors right. but maybe there's got to be a point where those we are rookie numbers in this well, racket well what can we do to, to start it collectively and work together you know what i mean and i just i think that's my opinion is i think 100 percent the pro payout should be more and it should be uh should be higher but i also think that the pros can look at other ways that they can bring value to their sponsors in the series as a whole and like i, th- I think sylvian like he was saying you know he would love to race in the u.s just like what i was when i came over four years ago it's like but I think now that's not going to happen anymore. Like Sylvain said, he, he doesn't think he's going to come back next year. And right. I think that's going to happen with a lot of pros. And, you know, people aren't going to be able to come over because you're not going to be able to make a, you know, an even, t- not even a living just to live here from being a foreigner. And I think, yeah. you know, not trying to kill the foreigners, but it's almost coming to the end being a foreigner unless you kill you know you're going to come here winning races dude it's, it's across it's, the board as a whole yeah, look at our race last weekend there was one usa rider yeah so you had all foreigners in the main because they were funded by national teams things right. like that exactly. so it's it, it double it's a double-edged sword because you yeah. have guys like sylvan that are out here on his own dollar that can't afford to do it but then you have all the american guys that are struggling to get to the races too yeah you know it's, what i mean yeah, it's tough. So, so it's going to be across the board and i think eventually somebody's going to have to roll up their sleeves on both sides on yeah. the sanction side uci side and the pro side and go what can we do yeah. to solve this problem or it's going to get to the point where there just there isn't much of a pro class anymore mm-hmm. and i think like the we've got grand junction straight off it's a week after the world so mm-hmm. super cross there and then is it Pitts- pittsburgh or south uh, no. No. South. Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Yeah, you know, Louisville. they're, they're 3,000 to win both days. So I think it'll be a big test if everyone shows up there. You know, I mean, I know I'm going to be going to both of them. And I think that's going to, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully a lot of people will go straight from the Welds and, and race Grand Junction and maybe that'll give them a bit of life. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyway. what do you think, Nick? Yeah, Nick, we, let's get Nicky, Nicky Jones in I this. Said, put a fork in it. Put, yeah, a fork, okay, yeah, put, put a, a fork, fork in it. Put a fork <laughs> in it. What about, about Jukio? Juki, uh, you want more money? No, <laughs> More money? Huh? Yes, party, yes. Party time? Yes. More money for party oh, he's time. He's Japan. More Japan money for Japan. party time. <laughs> he's got that money. Well, I think at the end of the day, we can go on with this one for, for hours. Um, and no one called in. But nobody called in, so <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants anything to do with yeah. us. Let's... Uh, we're going to put a fork in this conversation for now. Like Nick said, we're coming to the end of our show, so we want to open up the phone lines, do some Q&A. We've got a couple. How many voicemails we got, Sam? we got two. Two voicemails. <laughs> All two. We're going to listen to our two voicemails. If you guys want to call in, feel free to call in. All phone right. lines are open. Let's hear our first voicemail. All righty. Loading. Hey, how you doing, uh, uh, Sam and Tyler? My name is Seymour Squawson, does it? First time caller, long time listener. I just got a question. I got a question about Trent Jones. Where is he? Where is this young man? He hurt his knee. He's gone. He's off the face of the earth. I mean, he's 22 years old. He should have just drained the knee and came back and raced BMX. Don't know where he's at. Maybe he's in New Zealand. See him drinking coffee, watching surfing videos. Where is this kid at? I'm ready for some kind of Rocky IV montage, the comeback of Trent Jones. Can anybody tell me where this kid is at? Uh, Good question. I think he did. He he hurt his knee. Yeah, yeah, man. He he said. He answered it. He heard (laughs) this. Some bitch should have got a train. Get the knee drain and get back out here. He's out (laughs) drinking coffee and watching surf videos back in New Zealand. Yeah, he's dumb. Hear that? You got some fans, Trent. Get your New Zealand, get your Kiwi ass back over here, man. People want to see you race. Give us an update. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's it. What did he say his name was? I don't know. Seymour. Even, yeah. He wanted to know, so. He must be friends with Dick. Anyway, <laughs> we've got another one here. This one uh, from Dale in North Carolina. Hey, this is Dale uh, from North Carolina. Uh, I know this is a BMX show, but I just wanted to know if uh, 
Do you think if Jimmy Johnson and the Intimidator, Dale, Dale Earnhardt, if they were to race, who was going to win? Who would win and why? This is the same guy? Love the show, guys. Keep up the good work. Oh, different number. Get her done. That's Dale. Different number. I wonder who that number. Uh, that that kind of <laughs> sound like a, a fellow fellow pro rider on the I game. Think, I think Jimmy would win. Yeah, you calling Jimmy? I think Jimmy win. Jimmy win. Jimmy win. All right, All right guys. Well, do let's see. Do we, do we have any uh, any other questions? Dale yeah. Fix says Trent's Trent's too busy looking at Connor's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. Uh, this is a question for all elites. What amateur age group do you think represents their sponsors the most on social media at the races? And has the knowledge to talk about the technology or product they represent. Okay, I'm just gonna jump. I'm just gonna jump straight into that one because I think there's too much emphasis put on amateurs, and this goes back into our pro thing. I think more focus needs to be put on the pros. We had Bubba as in the, uh, Bubba on our guest. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't really care. I'm not up for any title. When I was amateur, I would never. Oh, do you have a first caller? I'm gonna call. Answer the call. Answer the call. We'll get back in it. This will blow my answer. We got our first call on the show. Hello. Welcome to Cafe Willoughby Show. How can we help you? Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm actually an Australian guy living uh, living in Los Angeles. Um, race BMX myself for ages. Just a quick question. I don't know whether you guys can answer it or not. But uh, how come Australia doesn't get World Cup rounds such as Argentina and Manchester and stuff like that with the Sleeman's track? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, they had we had one World Cup uh, along with the oh, back in two thousand eight. It was in Adelaide, and a big part of it is the fee that UCI charges. It, it's about I want I, I'm just plucking numbers, but it's somewhere between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars to to host a World Cup. And uh, the, I know the last time they did it, it about sent the sanction broke um, for the for the payback they got from doing it. So it would be good because Sleeman's one of the best tracks in the world, and, and Australia gets into BMX. And um, you know there is a there is a new track, the Sam Willoughby BMX track, being built in Adelaide, and I know that they're going to vote for one here in the future. So we may see another World Cup go to Australia in the next couple of years. Sam's going to put up the money. But yeah, it, no. it, it's uh, it's mainly a financial. Thing. like UCI just makes it unaffordable for a lot of these countries to have them. So how it works is just a little bit more into that. So UCI is the sanction of the event and they go to the local promoter, whoever it may be, Argentina, USA, where, Papandal, wherever, and it's up to that local to promoter to come up with a minimal fee that's well, that's over a hundred thousand dollars, and to have that World Cup. So if a place like Australia goes, hey, we don't have an extra hundred grand sitting around, that's where it's hard. Uh, so that's why the World Cups aren't there anymore. Right, right. And I guess, I mean, another broader question, but is the Australian, the national level of Australian BMX as big as the Netherlands and Argentina and stuff like that? I mean, my assumption would be yes. And so, you know, technically they, they should have a financial backing, but is the scene in Argentina far bigger or the Netherlands just far, far more riders and just a far bigger pool of money to, to pull from? Uh, Australia has a pretty, we have pretty good numbers in Australia. Uh, I don't think it's as good as probably like France or, uh, I don't know what Holland's numbers are, but for the size of country that Australia is compared to say France and Holland, like on a ratio like that, it probably wouldn't be as good. Um, but I don't know, I, I see BMX getting quite strong again in Australia. We have a lot of good juniors coming up and, um, and even some of the younger kids are, are pretty talented. So I would look for the next five years, six years, 10 years to be pretty promising. But maybe what that can be too, on another side note, is maybe it's not just reliant on the local the local scene. Maybe like Argentina, maybe their local city sports commission or the local city is gonna back and pay that $100,000. So it's not necessarily like in Papandal, maybe it's not necessarily the local cycling governing body that's fronting the money maybe it's the local city that's going hey our hotels are going to be filled up this and this and this yeah we're going to give you guys a hundred thousand dollar grant because we're going to see this money across the board in a bunch of different avenues from our local restaurants our local shops our local hotels things like that does that make sense yeah yeah no, completely and I, I truly think i mean you look at the supercross track there in brisbane at Sleeman's, and you know it's held three nationals now and it's a, it's a world class track, and you just think that you know a World Cup. It's next year; it'll be ten years since Australia hosted the 
one in 2008, yeah. um, you know, the, the value that it brings to the economy, you bring world-class riders, and which draws, you know, people, you know, have interest, and Australia does have, you know, such a prominent BMX scene in both the Olympic level with, you know, Anthony Dean and, and Sam and, you know, uh, you know, Bodie and the other guys coming through, um, and well, as well in the female level with, you know, Caroline and Lauren Reynolds and stuff like that. So I think, you know, at a local level, you know, a lot of people could would, would relate to, you know, the heavy BMX scene in Australia, but also at an international level could really bring a lot of money for Brisbane and, and stuff like that and use the track that's, that's there, you know, it's a fantastic yeah. track. Put it, put it to use, put it on the UK calendar. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the problem is for a lot of the cities, like the reason why the cities won't put money into it is because on the scale of bringing a BMX event for what it brings to the economy compared to, say, you know, a V8 supercar race or, a, um, you know, any other event, really, it's just it's such a small tick on the, on the scale compared to those things. So um, until we can get you know, more people buying tickets and, and doing those things, um, yeah, it's... it's it, it, it's not going to be profitable, but um, but hopefully it's it's working towards that that mark. And like you said, the the public yeah. does get around BMX a lot better in Australia than probably a lot of places around the world. So it'd be good to see one get back there. Fantastic! All right, guys, love the show. I'll uh, get down and enjoy dinner or something like that after. Cheers! Thanks for calling in. All right, man. Thanks for the call. <laughs> no. Dang, look at that. Our show's so official now. Just like that, you too could call in. <laughs> Just like that, you dial up the 1-800 number, it's plastered across our screen in a really nice graphic. We've left it there. Um, back to the question that we had before that, it was just talking about amateurs and what's the best amateur to represent social media, blah, 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 blah. Personally, like I was saying, I raced Bubba when I was younger. Bubba rode for Red Bull. I got more call -ins. I'm going to quit my question because it doesn't even matter. Let's just yeah, go back to the call. Your ability to accept this call, press 1 to send the call. Hello, Cafe Willoughby. Uh, I just want to know uh, what Anthony benches. This guy looks like an animal. He is an animal. Anthony, what do you bench, bro? What's 200 kilos in pounds? <laughs> 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 About that, no. What do you bench? I need it in pounds. I don't know how to do kilos. 130, 140? Say 140. 140. Hold on, that's that hold on, we're gonna give you the conversion so you know. 140 in pounds. Hundred hundred forty. What's your name there, sir? <laughs> My name's Jesse Zivkovic. Well thanks for calling in, Jesse. Jesse, Jesse, we just did the we did the conversion. Anthony benches about three hundred and ten pounds. Dang. Yeah. On a rest what, day. What, how on many a rest protein day. shakes is this guy slamming a day? How many protein shakes you drink a day? None. None. Now maybe might eat. So there's eat. not enough money in the pro payout for him to afford I protein. Can't even, so. I can't even afford protein. So. Now maybe not even not even one a day. Maybe three a week. For real. Three a week. I mean at least. Those are rookie maybe, numbers in this racket. Box I got was from Elise, so I've run out. So <laughs> that's why I'm here actually. <laughs> At least you have any more clean show. athlete supplements oh, you, can, yeah. you can send to Anthony? Clean athlete, yeah. She, she laughs, so I guess that's <laughs> a no. <laughs> <laughs> don't take greeting, do you? <laughs> All right, man, thanks for the call. All right, Jesse, legend. All right, thanks. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Two call-ins. We're killing the game. Juki, you want to call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? No? Any other calls we should take, or what do you think? All right, go on to your question you're trying to get to. I'm just going to get halfway through it, and somebody's going to call in again. They so, will. Yeah. So, Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So the big thing is, is amateurs, what's the best amateur? I'm going to try this for the third time now. Uh, Bubba rode for Redline. He was the top guy in my class. I would never buy a Redline because Bubba raced it. He was my competition. Oh, here's the flip side of that, though. I grew up in Australia, and all I wanted was a Super Goose because Joey Bradford rode oh. one. All right, touche, oh, touche. I would never buy it because I didn't want to be a Bubba booster. That's what I always called it. So, but on the flip side of it, I wanted a GT or whatever, whatever bike Tomas Allier was riding or Randy Stumphauser was riding because those are the pros that I looked up to. So I think there might need to be less emphasis on giving every amateur free stuff and more, maybe a little bit more on the pros, building these up. So it's like kids are wanting to buy a Supercross because Anthony's on it, not because the local ten-year-old expert got a free carbon bike. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to someone in Australia at the national at the Australian Championships, and 
it was more so that I was saying like, you know, one of their best friends got a free bike and they were more, you know, s upset that he got a free bike and he wanted to get a free bike to feel better rather yeah. than, you know, it, it's gone to the days where you, you know, the pros, they, you know, the kids should be looking up well, to the pros and, up you, and you want to buy, that and you bike, buy a bike. Yeah. I mean, me and Sam, like we have photos of, you know, I think I had, I had a trolley helmet with a, a fly, a fly jersey with answer pants <laughs> on a red line bike with <laughs> Haro forks. You know, we had stickers all over our helmets. I got photos, yeah. you know, cause you wanted to be like all the pros. That's right. what it was. I'd, you know, each one of my favorite pros was sponsored by something different. And that's what I wanted to run that helmet that, you know, all right, so we got another, yeah, just giving it to them, you know? no, I agree. Everybody just gives out something. So we got a we got a question from yeah, the least post been sponsored since she was three. So it's Nick Long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just straight out of the womb to a full factory ride. Look at that. What do you think? You sponsored? Perfect. Yeah. Let's, Let's get him in the camera. Jukio, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Here, guys. Come Take on. him my seat. Come on. Jukio. Jukio, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> well, he walks over here. You better use your words. What? Use your words. <laughs> Okay, if you don't know, just say party time. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Jukio, Japan, fresh off the plane. Konnichiwa. What, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, party time. Party time. <laughs> free bikes for amateurs or no? Amateur. Amateur free bike? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jukio's all for it. He said he wants it. Free bikes for everybody? Free bikes? Free. Oh, uh, free? Yeah. Uh, no. No, there you go. See, you heard it first directly from him. Jukio free bikes. no. Anyone got a question for Jukio? You want to call in, talk to the man? Feel free. All right, go on with your next question. <laughs> All right, so my next question comes from the track operator of the Washington Pro-Am. The guy always puts some big money Pro-Ams up each year. And he says, why don't the pros support the local Pro-Ams that are offered? Uh, sounds like Tangent has a good series going, but don't hear any elites attending. Then two weeks ago, Canada holds one and only Tory shows up. If these pros won't support these Pro-Ams, TOs are going to quit hosting them. It takes a lot of time to put these together and not have the pros attend is kind of a slap in their faces. They want guys to, to be, or the, these guys want to be pros, but they don't show up and race these events. Sorry to vent, just my two cents. Well, you put it on the same weekend as Nashville, you can't expect everyone. Yeah, for number one, that one in Canada, that was rad, but it's the same weekend as Nash N Nashville, so yeah. that's not going to happen. The Tangent one, um, a lot of it times, like like you did have like the one in Bakersfield where there was a ton of guys there. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, think they need to invite the pros, right? I have no idea up and line. Yeah, and I would agree with I Anthony. Think should send every pro, you know? Yeah. An invite. There was... Because I don't know, I never know that there's a, a program until the last minute, like... There was a pro-am like two weeks ago in Southern California. I should say pro-am. It was just ended up being an amateur open. It was like 500 bucks for the win. I run a track that's two hours away. I run a track. I had no idea about it. They should have been like calling up the local tracks and going, hey, Chula Vista, we know that you have 20 pros on a Tuesday night. Would you mind letting people know that we're having a pro-am that pays money? So I think that would have been, I, I agree with Anthony. I think more people just need to know about it. So I think it goes out to what promotion. What do you think, Duke? Put a four K. <laughs> but on the flip side of it, if they do promote it, I think the pros should try to attend those races because those guys do put up some big money. So if a guy like uh, like the, like the pro am up at Washington, if they go up and I mean they've got how much did you win the year when you won it? Uh, five grand. Five grand. So if that kind of money, I mean you'd have to win five rounds of five. Cool. Or thirty-five hundred. Yeah. I think it's okay. Regardless, it's triple what the normal payout is, or it has been in the past. So hopefully the pros do support those events and show up and race on it. So we do know from Rich a couple weeks ago, all you pros that are listening, Tangent Pro-Am, one coming up in a couple weeks, we've got like five, six Gs up for the pot. No excuse, Jukio, you go. <laughs> you take bullet train. Bullet train? Bullet train. <laughs> Shinkansen. Ah, Shinkansen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we're coming up over a couple hours here. Anything else? Any other good questions you got to you gotta crack on, Sam? Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. I mean... uh. Dale Fix says Billy Griggs put Redline on the map. Damn All right. Did. <laughs> there what you go. Think? You put Chase on the map? Chase? Chase Bicycles. Yeah. Sean, Dale very good. Sean Gaines is in. Very good. Oh, oh, this is probably about the track, so. Probably... Sean Gaines, you're live on Cafe Willoughby. What's up, dude? What's up? How are you? Good, man. I thought you were calling in on the show. What do you want to say? I was going to ask you if you're going to leave the bike at the track, but what do you want to talk about? <laughs> you guys all done out there? Yeah. 
Yeah, you can uh, just leave my bike there. I'm gonna wrap up this show here in a couple minutes, and I'll be out there to get it. All right, cool. Any any shout outs you want to do since you're live on the show? Oh uh, yeah, you know, shout outs like Box BMX, Thrill, Fly, you know, all the fun of those. Man, dream happen. those are what rookie numbers in the track. All right, thanks, Sean. I'll come get my bike in a few. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't really care. I'm not up for any title. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you heard it first. I got to get out to the track. My bike's just sitting there in the parking lot. So, okay. Anything so else? If you want a free DK? There's one in the parking lot in uh, Chula Vista BMX. Go get it. I got. You got <laughs> ten minutes to get there. Yeah, the race is on. Anything you want to say, Shane? Don't act like you're not impressed. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Show number three. There you go. You heard it from Juki. We're done. We'll catch you guys next Monday on Cafe Willoughby.